The story begins with the fact that a small area in the city has turned into ruins, one can understand that war is the most effective and cruel way to destroy civilization, because until recently people lived here. It can be difficult to see anything through the sand dunes, but here a lizard may catch your eye, which reigns over the entire desert and is distracted by any rustle. From the Pyramid of Cheops and the Statue of the Great Sphinx, one can understand that the actions take place not in an ordinary desert, but on the western bank of the Nile in Egypt. A group of a guy and a man, one of them called his friend a professor and notified that it was time to leave here. The professor listened to the arguments of his colleague, chaos had begun in the area, so the group would be better off leaving it quickly. The professor did not want to leave this place and assured his colleague that everything was fine and he could return to the hotel, and the guy himself would come later. The guy also said that everything would be fine with him and he also asked his colleague not to address him so formally. The man said that the professor is a very important guest and he must ensure his complete safety, because anything can happen in this region. The guy's name was Yi Hong, and while the guys were talking, something provoked a strong storm and sand fell in all directions. The cause of the severe storm was a helicopter that had a red cross on its fuselage as an identification mark and did not look like a combat vehicle. The group of men did not immediately notice the flying object and only after some time did they pay attention to it. Yi Hong ordered the guard Mike to send the professor and come back here, the bodyguard took out a rifle and began to carry out the order. Mike very quickly pushed the professor into his armored SUV on Yi Hong's orders. Mike drove the professor through the desert away from this place, and Yi Hong followed them with his eyes to make sure there was no ambush. The helicopter was unable to land properly and performed an emergency landing, which almost led to its serious failure. The blade stopped turning and the tail of the helicopter was very badly damaged, and a wounded girl climbed down from its side. In addition to the severe wound in her stomach, the girl also had traces of blood on her face, especially visible on her cheeks. The wounded girl, holding her wound, walked towards Yi Hong, who remained in place. The girl passed by Yi Hong without even looking in his direction, but the guy himself was able to appreciate the girl and notice that she was very beautiful. The wounded passenger of the destroyed helicopter and Yi Hong stood with their backs to each other without exchanging a single word. After the helicopter with the red cross, a battle swallow filled with people appeared, and Yi Hong became a little worried at the sight of it. There were armed militants inside the helicopter who climbed down from the side via cables. The chief of the armed men ordered them to line up and group, then they set off in the direction of Yi Hong. Yi Hong realized that these people were here for a reason and most likely came for the wounded girl, the guy said that the girl's wound was bleeding heavily. Yi Hong invited the girl to just sit here if she wanted to live, and she, hearing the Chinese accent, realized that this was her compatriot. The frightened and wounded girl asked Yi Hong if he had a dagger in case of an attack by militants to fight them off. Yi Hong replied that the guys who were chasing the beauty were very heavily armed and a dagger would definitely not help against such guys. The girl said that she could run away from here or commit suicide, but Yi Hong was sure that if the girl just didn't move, then everything would be fine. The beauty asked why she should not move, she could be captured, and Yi Hong told her to trust him and not ask unnecessary questions. The guy slapped the girl realizing that she would not listen to him voluntarily and would continue asking stupid questions. The girl fell on her side and closed her eyes, and Yi Hong said that he just wanted to help her and would save her. One of the armed militants called out to the brave Yi Hong and aimed his pistol at him. The man warned the guy that if he wants to live, he better leave here immediately, otherwise his people will start shooting. Yi Hong said that the gunman believed too much in himself when he pointed a gun at him, even without knowing the guy, he also asked him if he thought about dying. One of his subordinates was indignant at the guy's impudence and said that they were cruel people and could shoot him right now without the slightest twinge of conscience. Yi Hong was not frightened by these words and he began to calculate the wind that was in the desert and said that he could knock out the guy in five seconds. Yi Hong stood confidently against the backdrop of the lying girl, and the militants laughed at his words and did not believe that they were in danger. Yi Hong took advantage of the wind in the desert and with a few movements directed all the sand towards the offenders. For a few seconds, the militants lost sight from the sand in their eyes and were unable to see Yi Hong. A couple of seconds later, Yi Hong was already holding his dagger at the throat of the main militant. The leader only had time to look down, where his murdered accomplice lay with his throat cut. 
The main militant asked Yi Hong who he was and what he was doing here, the dead militant lay and frightened his leader with his appearance, he had a special tattoo on his shoulder. Yi Hong said that when he saw the tattoo, he realized that the guys were from a gang of wild crocodiles, and he also said that this woman could now leave him and the militants from here. The desert storm subsided and nothing else disturbed the militants and Yi Hong, who looked at each other tensely. Yi Hong continued to hold the knife threateningly at the throat of the head of the gang of wild crocodiles, and he, in turn, apparently recognized the guy. The man began to talk about the Temple of the Gods, these are the most legendary mercenaries in the whole world, the best killers and professionals in their field, but even among them there is the best. The best mercenary in the world was a guy nicknamed Archimedes, he had abilities incomprehensible to ordinary people, and in the world of hired killers and companies he was called a god. But Yi Hong realized that this was a story about him and asked the militant why he didn't retreat if he recognized the guy and the man, asking for forgiveness, turned around. Yi Hong asked the militants to stop to warn them about something important to them. The guy asked the militants not to tell anyone that they saw him in the desert and in general in the local area. To make Yi Hong's word sound more convincing, he pointed to the body of a dead fellow militant and said that this could happen to any of them if they could not keep their mouths shut. The militants did not need to explain anything a second time and they agreed to the conditions, after which they headed to their helicopter. The helicopter took off and the armed group taking off discussed among themselves that meeting Archimedes alive was a great success and even a miracle. After making sure that the militants would definitely not return, Yi Hong decided to return to the wounded Chinese woman whom he laid on the sand. The girl continued to lie humbly in the same position in which she had landed. Yi Hong looked at her a little with a quick glance and saw that she was not showing any signs of life. The guy didn't even try to bring her to her senses, realizing that it was useless and immediately took her in his arms. With the wounded girl in his arms, Yi Hong began to look for ways to solve this problem, because he promised to save her life. Yi Hong decided that there must be something in the helicopter that the girl landed on that could help her. In the passenger cabin he found a small bed and some medicines that could help save the girl. Yi Hong carefully laid the girl down so as not to damage her bones, which were weakly held by her muscles. Next, the guy opened a large first aid kit with a red cross and found a small surgical kit there. Despite the lack of tools and meager choice, Yi Hong had no choice but to carry out the operation right in the middle of the desert in a broken helicopter. Apparently the mercenary had already encountered something similar and was a professional, because there were no signs of excitement visible on him at all. With the help of tweezers, his cool head and calm hands, Yi Hong was able to pull the bullet out of the girl's wound. Yi Hong, after a difficult operation, felt the very intense heat in the desert and took off his t-shirt, exposing his scars. The guy was very tired from the intense heat, problems with the militants, the desert and everything else, he wiped the sweat from his face. The helicopter stood nearby with the pyramids, but unfortunately, it was already out of order after an unsuccessful landing. Yi Hong, after completing the work, half of his torso walked out of the crashed helicopter. The guy took out his phone and looked at the time, it was already 20 minutes past 2, which means that Mike would soon return and be able to take the girl to the hospital and notify the embassy. Yi Hong heard something rustling in the air above the helicopter and noticed a strange object. The noisy object turned out to be a small drone that hovered above the helicopter, and the guy's watch received a call. A male voice from the watch told Yi Hong that he was now resting in good shape. Meanwhile, a drone remained flying above Yi Hong's head, watching the guy. The man who communicates with Yi Hong watches the guy, and a picture from the drone's camera is visible on his tablet. Then the man said that he would now remember what he wanted to offer the guy, and in the meantime he could ask his questions. Yi Hong wittily pointed out that his boss was calling him just to chat, but that was not the case. The man told Yi Hong that he had been working for him for 10 years, then he invited the guy to return to his homeland. Yi Hong looked at his watch and thought that it had been so long since he started working for the man. The guy was flooded with memories when he was still young and first became acquainted with the topic of mercenaries. Yi Hong still remembers how the old fox came to him, which greatly surprised the young guy. Old fox was dressed in military uniform, it was like a guide light showing his way. Yi Hong's life changed with the start of his education and training, initially the guy thought that he would die from this course. But the days passed and Yi Hong, on the contrary, 
only grew stronger and new obstacles did not seem so difficult to him, he began to understand that this was the only way to become stronger. Every day the loads became more and more difficult, but the guy's body did not stand still, he became easier to cope with difficulties. Yi Hong told Old Fox that he himself did not allow him to return home, and the boss replied that the mercenary should not worry and prepare to move, the man also left several gifts for the guy. Interested, Yi Hong decided to ask what kind of gifts the old fox could have prepared for him. The man did not reveal all his cards and said that the guy could find out about this when he comes to China. The old fox hung up and the connection between him and Yi Hong was interrupted, the guy was left alone. The connection between them was interrupted and the clock began to hiss unusually, and Yi Hong was waiting for Mike, who should arrive here soon. After the conversation, the drone flew away from the desert, leaving Yi Hong alone with the wounded girl. A month after all his missions in Egypt, Yi Hong landed in his native China on a plane. After a couple of difficult hours at the gates, terminals, etc., Yi Hong could finally feel the road under his feet. In his hands the guy held a pot with a small plant donated by the old fox. Yi Hong examined the pot with a small sprout and thought how could this be an important and valuable gift. This is an ordinary plant, the guy thought, but the old fox assured him that this was a special plant and asked Yi Hong to take care of it. A new Mercedes parked in front of the arriving guy to take him to the city. The car stopped right in front of Yi Hong, who was holding his suitcases and a strange plant. The driver asked Yi Hong to wait a little, after which he put his things in the trunk and put the guy in the back seats. Then the driver took the guy around the city, for Yi Hong it was all as if it was new, because his feet had not set foot in his homeland for ten years. After a short drive around the city, the car stopped in the parking lot and the driver was preparing to drop off his passenger. Yi Hong tried to ask his driver where they had arrived, but he did not answer, but simply handed him the keys to his new car, which the boss provided. The guy, without hearing answers to his questions, took the keys to the new car and prepared to leave the car. Yi Hong realized that he would have to get used to it himself and left the car along with his plant. But the guy's mood remained positive, because he tried to find the car that the old fox left him. To his great surprise, it was not a pretentious jeep or sports car, but an ordinary small car. There were also strange license plates on the car, which indicated involvement with mercenaries, all of which made Yi Hong worried. The angry guy called his boss to express his dissatisfaction with the car and its license plates. Yi Hong said that with such numbers they would find him very quickly, but the old fox replied that he specially made such a license plate so that in emergency cases he would know what happened to the guy. The guy further pointed out that his boss considers himself the richest man, but left him such a cheap car. The old fox asked Yi Hong not to rush, he needs to take this car to Willishan and rest a little, and then he will find a gift there. Yi Hong realized that his boss had deceived him again, but there was nothing he could do, so he hung up the phone and got behind the wheel of the car. Before starting the car, Yi Hong found a pack of cigarettes in the car and decided to take a smoke break while driving. After a short smoke break, Yi Hong set off and went about his business in the city, as the old fox advised. Despite all the troubles and deception on the part of the boss, Yi Hong did not despair and continued to believe in the best. The car also had a built-in assistant that reminded the guy about safety rules and traffic rules. After some time, Yi Hong was already flying along the city highway, squeezing the maximum out of the car. The guy was distracted from the road by a mirror in which he saw something interesting. These were the flashing lights of the police, Yi Hong did not understand why he could be stopped and thought that it was all because of the calling numbers. Following the guy's car was a police motorcycle, which required the driver to pull over to the side of the road. The police motorcycle was already ahead of the guy and he was already visible not in the rearview mirror, but right through the windshield of the car. The police officer abruptly stopped his official motorcycle right in front of the guy's car. Yi Hong had no choice but to stop his vehicle and respond to the police demand. The police officer turned out to be a pretty girl who approached the car and began knocking on the driver's door window to talk to the offender. Yi Hong, of course, did not want to communicate with the police but in such a situation, when he could not tear himself away, there was nothing to do. With her stern gaze, the girl began to examine the driver, who never introduced himself. The first thing Yi Hong noticed was not the badge or uniform, but the girl's slender figure. Even through the uniform, the girl's gorgeous body was visible, 
especially her breasts, which were hard not to notice and Yi Hong stared at it. The police officer immediately understood where the driver was looking and began to protest with just one glance. The girl tensed her hand and hit it on the roof of the car, after which she asked where the driver was looking, hinting at her body. Yi Hong didn't answer, and the police asked him to show his driver's license, if he had one. The guy left the car and the police began to examine the inside of the car, but could not find anything except a strange plant. The girl continued to inspect the guy's car, after which she began to look at the license plates and after she looked at the license plate, she laughed a little. Yi Hong handed over his driver's license and said that men are naturally obligated to pay attention to those around them of the opposite sex. The girl snatched the driver's license from the guy's hands, and Yi Hong fully described his body parameters, height, weight, leg length and hip volume, he also added that he is an ideal man and his look is just instincts. The police officer was annoyed by the narcissistic comments about herself and tried to ignore it while she inspected her license. The girl said that she wanted to check the guy's car more carefully, because she had suspicions about suspicious substances in the cabin. Yi Hong got out of the car again and asked if the employee found any illegal substances. The girl replied that no prohibited substances were really found and Yi Hong asked what was the matter then. The police officer replied that she would give the guy two fines of $50 each for not wearing a seat belt buckle and parking in a prohibited place, and Yi Hong protested because he was forced to stop. The girl said that she saw everything herself, but if the guy doesn't have a first aid kit, then this is another fine, and if he continues to threaten, then another fine in the amount of $200. Yi Hong tried to prove that he was stopped here and had nothing to do with it, and the girl replied that the total amount of fines was 6 points worth $200. Yi Hong had already resigned himself to the punishment, realizing that there was no way to convince the employee and decided to ask what would happen to his car. The police officer replied that she would call a tow and the guy could pick up the car as soon as he paid the fine, so it was in his interests to do this as quickly as possible. As a result of all the fines, Yi Hong was left without a car and went to the bus stop to catch a taxi. The guy with all his things became on foot and extended his hand so that the taxi drivers would pay attention to him. He didn't have to wait long and one of the drivers noticed him, Yi Hong had already gotten into the car and the taxi driver was asking him about the route. The guy replied that he needed to go to a village on Mount Willishan, which is located not far from the city. There were terrible traffic jams in the city itself, so the road ahead was difficult and very long. Finally, the car was able to escape from the city filled with cars and the driver was already driving along the mountain roads. On the way, Yi Hong fell asleep a little towards the end and the driver woke him up, saying that they had already reached their destination. Yi Hong took all his things and stood in front of the cottage with a rolling suitcase and a plant in his hands. The guy's gaze immediately fell on the small pool that was located on the territory of the house. Yi Hong immediately plunged into the water because he did not have the opportunity to take a shower on the road. The guy was ready to come to terms with everything and said that the old fox still has a conscience, because it could have been worse. Then the click of a woman's heel was heard from the house and the girl walked towards the pool. The guy's gaze immediately turned towards the sound to understand who else could be in the house besides him. A pretty girl with long legs and a gorgeous figure said that she was there to give the guy some clothes. The girl put her shirt and trousers on the table in front of the pool and began to look at Yi Hong. The girl put her hands on the guy's shoulders and said that he was the most respected guest for them and could ask for whatever he wanted. The girl began to massage the guy's shoulders and added that she could offer Yi Hong full service. This alarmed Yi Hong and he thought about what the old fox could be up to, because this is all for a reason. Yi Hong told the girl to go out and when he changed clothes, he would call her again. After these words, the girl gently ran her fingers over the guy's cheek and left the backyard. The guy dried himself with a towel, and then put on his trousers, which had been left on the table in advance. Yi Hong put on a shirt from the same table and, already buttoning it, went to the girl. The sweet maid was already expecting the guy and said that he managed it very quickly. The couple walked further through the cottage together, but an awkward silence hung over them. Yi Hong decided to break up the awkward pause between him and the girl and asked what her name was. The worker opened the door, turned on the light, opened the door to the room and told the guy that names were not disclosed here. A spacious room with good lighting, a TV, and a balcony, Yi Hong could not have dreamed of this for such a long time in Egypt and on planes. 
The girl left the room and asked the guy to wait, but Yi Hong fell back onto the bed as if he had been shot. The girl was absent for a short time and after a couple of minutes she asked to come into the room again. Yi Hong allowed the girl to enter the room and she was already standing on the threshold with a basket containing a towel and vessels with oil. The maid put everything on the table and asked the guy to turn over on his back so she could start the massage. The guy turned around and looked at the beauty, who was rubbing her hands and preparing to give a massage. Yi Hong said that this gift from Old Fox should compensate for the afternoon injury and the car with license plates. Yi Hong didn't even think about resisting, so he turned over on the bed and asked the girl to start. The servant climbed onto the guy's back and said that she would now give him a massage with essential oils, which meant that Yi Hong would have to take off his outer clothing. The girl explained that this was necessary to make the massage more comfortable and she wanted to provide the guy with the best service. Yi Hong said that his scars, which were hidden by his shirt, could scare the girl, but the maid assured that she was a professional and the scars would not scare her. Yi Hong began to slowly and nervously unbutton the buttons on his shirt, trying not to scare the girl with his appearance. The maid saw the guy's excitement and approached him, after which she put her hands on his shoulders. The girl said that she would help the guy take off his shirt, and Yi Hong himself was not against it. The girl erotically and slowly took off the guy's shirt and finally saw the very scars the guy was talking about. Yi Hong realized that the girl was frightened by the sight of his body and asked if it was that scary? The girl replied that she was not afraid, but simply did not think that they were so deep and serious, she also asked where they came from? Yi Hong laughed it off, saying that he himself would not be able to remember the origin of all the scars, after which he suggested starting the massage. The girl said that everything was ready, she didn't ask any more questions about the scars on her back. The beauty's gentle hands began to gently touch the guy's strong back and her fingers traced a line from top to bottom. Next, as the servant promised, she spilled some essential oil, which greatly frightened Yi Hong. The guy sensed danger and immediately grabbed the girl's hand, after which he squeezed it tightly. Yi Hong asked the girl in an aggressive manner what she was using on him and for what. The maid replied that this was an essential oil for a relaxing massage and the guy apologized, realizing that he had lost his temper in vain. The lamps in the corridors of the country house continued to glow, which meant that the maid continued to massage Yi Hong. The girl carefully and gently ran her hand over the guy's palms and asked if he liked everything. At first Yi Hong liked everything, but then he suspected something was wrong, he felt cold pieces of iron near his hands. These were handcuffs with which the girl tried to shackle the guy while he was relaxed and did not resist. Yi Hong didn't want to just give in to the handcuffs and immediately reacted by trying to turn around. Helping himself with his free hand, the guy began to get out of bed, but the girl could not hold him. Yi Hong had already turned around completely, there were handcuffs on one of his hands, but this did not bother the guy. The experienced mercenary was not easy and grabbed the surprised girl's hand in response so that she could not chain him completely. The guy took the initiative and he was already on top of the girl, whom he held with his hands to the bed. After a successful capture, the mercenary laughed at the girl's attempts to detain himself and notified her that she had been caught. Yi Hong was distracted for a couple of seconds, looking at the lying girl, his gaze was very hungry. And the object for his interested eyes was the girl's body especially her magnificent breasts. The girl asked the guy where he was staring, after which she called him a pervert and began to resist. With one hand, the maid still managed to escape from the guy's grip and she began to pull him towards her. She pulled the guy's torso and face as close to her as possible so that he wouldn't be able to grab her again. Yi Hong told the girl that he was not her enemy and should not be, then he asked why all these games with handcuffs? The beauty replied that the guy himself knew why she tried to arrest him, the girl turned out to be a police officer and wants to detain the guy, calling him Zhao Sanyuan. Yi Hong replied that the police were mistaken, because he came here just to relax and could not even know who Zhao Sanyuan was. The policewoman said that if the guy wasn't Zhao Sanyuan, he wouldn't have tried to escape the grip. In addition, the height, weight, and especially the scars coincide with the information about the criminal. Yi Hong said that anyone would react like that to the handcuffs they were trying to put on, especially since the guy didn't know that the girl was from the police. The girl rightly noted that the guy already knows about her work, but continues to resist. Yi Hong said that if he had resisted, the girl would not have been able to restrain him so easily. The policewoman told the guy not to think that if he was a man, he could defeat her. 
Silence fell between the couple and both looked at each other with loving and thoughtful eyes. But then the girl demanded that the guy immediately get off her if he didn't want even more problems with the law. Yi Hong said that she herself should first let go of her hands and not hold on to him, and the policewoman realized that she really grabbed him. But the guy's romantic evening was interrupted by a police squad, which demanded everyone to remain in place and face down on the floor. After the police said something, a guy wearing only shorts climbed over the balcony partition and into the room. The guy found Yi Hong and the policewoman in a very provocative position, when the mercenary was on top of the girl in the bed. The couple immediately drew attention to the unexpected guest and began to carefully examine him. The blue-haired guy told Yi Hong to frolic with the girl later, but now they urgently need to leave here. The guy headed to the door and notified the couple that he was leaving now and advised them to do the same. But no one allowed the guy to leave just like that, when he opened the door, he found a whole squad of police in front of him. Yi Hong also saw the policeman, so he took the girl's hands off his neck and put on his shirt. The police saw the guy and the main one ordered that Yi Hong not be allowed to leave here just like that. The guy was tied up and handcuffed on his hands so that he could not escape anywhere. Both guys stood in handcuffs and were accompanied by police, while the girl was getting dressed. The policewoman asked Yi Hong why he didn't break free and run away when he had such an opportunity, the guy replied that he couldn't help but listen to the policeman. Then the police asked why he struggled at first and did not allow himself to be handcuffed. Yi Hong said that this was unexpected for him and his reflexes towards the girl really worked. The policewoman did not believe the guy and pointed out to him that if she had shackles, he would have confessed all his crimes right there. The police officer grabbed the radio from another officer and notified superiors that the hunt for the criminal was over. They were able to catch the suspect and will now take them away, the police said over the radio. The employees were holding both guys and were about to leave the room and head to the cars. The police went out into the corridor where the rest of the criminals were, the suspects lay meekly with their hands behind their heads. One of the police officers ordered that they all be taken away as well, and Yi Hong paid attention to everyone's tattoos. The policemen were escorting the criminals out of the hotel and heading to their cars, a lot of people had already gathered at the scene. A red-haired guy with a tattoo walked right in front of Yi Hong, accompanied by four policemen. Yi Hong noticed for himself that he felt the desire to kill from the guy with the tattoo. The suspect's name was Shage and he was looking directly at a nearby group of police officers. The guy was asked where he was looking, and Shagai just started laughing hysterically in response. The police loaded all the suspects onto a bus, where armed police sat with them. Two officers slammed the doors of the police bus from the outside and it drove off. Accompanied by police cars, the convoy set off along the night mountain roads. All those arrested were handcuffed under the supervision of the police officer who detained Yi Hong. Yi Hong exchanged glances with the policewoman, who did not take her worried gaze off him. One guy named Yang's introduced himself and wanted to meet Yi Hong, but the police officer ordered both of them to shut up. Jans ironically replied that he was obeying the policewoman, but he himself did not feel much respect for the girl. Yans continued to whisper to Yi Hong that he immediately liked him and the guy was able to help both of them escape from here. Yi Hong thought that this guy was either too self-confident or had a good life school. Unfortunately, as Yi Hong thought, Yang's does not understand the danger they are in right now. The guy's gaze fell on Shigai, who was sitting, looking straight at the floor with his eyes. Shage barely noticeably moved his hands behind his back, but no one could suspect him of anything. Yi Hong thought about why the criminal might be fidgeting, was he really trying to remove the handcuffs? Indeed, Shigai's deft hands helped him free one of his hands from the cuffs. Yi Hong and Shigai immediately caught each other's gaze, interested Yi Hong tried to understand what the criminal was up to. The guys looked at each other, sitting opposite each other and suspecting something was wrong on this bus. The convoy had almost reached its destination, a huge number of cars and police officers accompanied the bus. Yi Hong turned to the police girl and said that something had happened to his handcuffs. The guy showed how one ring came off his wrist and the surprised employee examined them. The two armed policemen became wary and tightened their grip on their rifles. The policewoman tried to come up with a solution to the problem, realizing that the guy would be able to escape again. She couldn't think of anything better than handcuffing Yi Hong to her hand, so she did just that. Next, the girl ordered the police to examine the handcuffs on all the prisoners and Shigai was angered by the actions of Yi Hong, who, in his opinion, deliberately ruined everything. 
Shage understood that it was better not to get caught by the police with such offenses, which means he should confess now. Shage was handcuffed again, and the convoy had already reached its destination. The destination for the detainees was the Triple X Detention Center, where everyone was successfully transported. The guard locked the guys in the isolation ward and told them not to ask unnecessary questions, they would soon find out everything during interrogation. All four guys stood in the same cell and tried not to look at each other so as not to arouse suspicion. Yi Hong sat down on the nearest bench and Yang's immediately sat down next to him and began to call him. Yang's introduced himself again and said his name, and Yi Hong said that the guy had already talked about this. Yang's asked the guy his name and Yi Hong introduced himself as Shu Xiong, looking into the eyes of his fellow sufferer. Yi Hong asked Yang's to go with him to the interrogation, and he also demanded that he not ask unnecessary questions, but simply trust him. Here the silence was broken by Shigai, who began to suck in his stomach with great effort. Next, Shigai stuck out his stomach and took out a small needle, which was difficult to get in such a place. Yi Hong suspected something was wrong in the criminal's actions when he saw the needle in his hands. Shigai took the sharpened needle and began to walk around the cell, which frightened Yi Hong even more. Yi Hong expected that he might be attacked and stood up so that he would not be caught off guard. The bald and also the healthiest visitor to the detention center began to complain that he had just assembled a team, and the police tied him up again. The man said that he would find the one who betrayed him and rip off his scalp, and he also asked Yi Hong and Yang's to disperse. The man pushed the guys aside and told them to quickly follow his orders and not think for a long time. But Yi Hong did not want to put up with such behavior of the big guy and decided that it was worth reprimanding him. The big man turned towards Yi Hong, who was already swinging his fists. With a direct blow to the jaw, the experienced mercenary was able to calm the nervous ardor of his cellmate. The man flew to the other end of the detention center, as if he had been pushed with a huge sledgehammer. The sound of the big man falling could be heard even outside the chamber, and Yans and Shigai were surprised by Yi Hong's abilities. The bald criminal continued to lie on the floor after a powerful and unexpected blow. The big man tried to threaten Yi Hong, he said that the guy did not yet know who he had raised his hand to, but his protests were stopped by the guard, who was banging his baton on the bars of the cell. The guard ordered the detainees not to make noise and sit up straight, and also behave quietly, because otherwise they would get themselves into trouble. The big man sat down on the floor and angrily agreed with the guard's demands that he should sit still. Jans appreciated Yi Hong's blow and praised his new acquaintance for his courage and strength. One of the police officers returned to the detention center and asked Zhao Sanyuan to leave. But the guy said that his name was not Zhao Sanyuan, but Shu Xiong, and then remained where he was. The detention center staff opened the cell and asked the detainee to come with them. Yi Hong pointed at Yang's and said that he asked him to be interrogated together, the blue-haired guy confirmed this. The policeman said that in this case he needed to inform his superiors that there would be two suspects during the interrogation. The policeman reported to the captain that the suspect was asking to be interrogated with Yang Ze and the captain asked to bring them both. The employee looked at the guys with displeasure and ordered them to move faster. Yang Ze and Yi Hong looked at each other, nodded, and then went after the officer. The policeman led the guy down a long corridor, after which he opened the door to the interrogation room. The policeman stood in front of the guys so that they could not escape while the doors to the interrogation room opened. The officer then ordered both suspects to come in and Yi Hong entered the room first. The guys stood next to the captain, who was supposed to interrogate them. The captain turned out to be the same girl from the hotel who tried to detain Yi Hong, she ordered the guys to sit down at the table. The guys slowly walked to the table and began to demonstratively inspect the chairs before sitting down at them. The girl said that if both guys want to be together during interrogation, then so be it, she will make an exception. The policewoman pointed her hand at Yang Ze and asked the guy to tell everything he knew first. The girl wrote down the guy's name and asked him if he knew what he had done and why he was detained. Yang Ze asked for a little time to remember everything, meanwhile the girl was already starting to get annoyed. Yang Ze said that he was looking for his sister, who had been missing for a long time, at the resort he was able to confirm her identity, but as soon as she took off her clothes, the police burst in. The girl called Yang Ze a slippery guy and said that his father is a very famous person, and she also asked if the guy was afraid of disgracing his family name with such stupidity. 
Yang Ze asked not to drag his family into all this and asked for evidence of how he broke the law, the guy also said that he answered all possible questions, and she would have to discuss the rest with a lawyer. The girl wrote everything down and asked Yang Ze to wait at the door, for him the interrogation was already over. She then asked the guard to take Yang Ze and bring Li Kai Ying instead. Before leaving, Yang Ze carefully examined all the policemen and turned towards Yi Hong. One of the officers told the girl that she could begin questioning the other suspect. The police officer wanted to predispose the guy and did not immediately start with accusations, but simply greeted him again. The girl said that it should be in Zhao Sun Yuan's interest to cooperate with them in this investigation. Yi Hong repeated himself again, he explained to the young policewoman that he was not Zhao Sanyuan. Yi Hong further said that as a police officer with the rank of captain, the girl should avoid prejudice, because it will lead down the wrong path. The girl has already named the true facts about the guy, Yi Hong, 27 years old, without a place of residence, since he arrived here only in the afternoon. Yi Hong said that besides this, he still has life until today. The girl also thought that the guy's biography couldn't be so short, she decided to ask what happened before that. Yi Hong said that he has been working abroad for the past few years, and apart from some part-time work, he is an adjunct professor at Harvard. The girl stopped the guy at the word professor and slammed her hand on the interrogation table. The indignant policewoman said that she could not tolerate this, she had been to Harvard and conducted research there, such a university had never had a professor of that age in its history. Yi Hong did not respond to the girl's screams and asked her to just get to the point if she had already established the identity. The girl asked the guy if he knew why he was here and Yi Hong joked that it was most likely because of the incident on the massage table. The policewoman did not react to the guy's jokes and asked what Yi Hong had to do with the triads. Yi Hong said that it sounded like Chinese gangster groups, but apparently the police were mistaken, because the guy himself insisted that he couldn't even know what they were doing. The girl angrily rose above the table and said that their team had been following the guy for too long and knew about the meeting, location and participants. After a slight breakdown, the girl pressed the red button that was under the table. A small slot opened right in the middle of the table from which a screen with a keyboard emerged. The police said that according to their information, Yi Hong is an internationally wanted gang leader named Zhao Sanyuan. The girl explained that at first glance the guy runs an international shipping business, but undercover he is involved in smuggling national treasures and is also involved in the illegal wildlife trade. According to the police, Zhao Sanyuan has the same scars on his body as Yi Hong, and he also sold a kidney when he was desperate for money. Yi Hong was interested in the story of a guy who desperately sold a kidney and then rose to become a gang leader, but the guy stood his ground, he repeated his name and added that they could find information about his citizenship, and that there was a passport and ID in his luggage. The girl suddenly remembered that she had forgotten to look for information in his luggage when she first saw him. The police officer ordered the guard to bring Yi Hong's things and luggage into the interrogation room, while she checked the archives associated with his name. The girl took hold of the computer keyboard and began searching for all the information in the database. She entered Yi Hong's name and found some facts about him in the police database. The girl began to carefully study all the data to find what she could grab onto or if there was anything suspicious. Yi Hong had previously been convicted of some crimes, but never served time. Yi Hong, a 27-year-old man, went to an orphanage at the age of 10, was adopted two years later, studied at a boarding school at 16, the only thing that embarrassed him was his criminal record at the age of 16, but they could not bring him to justice. Yi Hong also saw all the information about himself and nervously clenched his pants as he read his entire history in the database. Yi Hong clearly had a bad time remembering the times when he was held accountable at the boarding school. The girl realized that this guy had not entered the country for 10 years, the captain even doubted that she had detained that man. The guy saw the policewoman's surprise and turned to her, but the girl continued to humbly remain silent. Yi Hong said that now after looking through the archives, Officer Zhou is convinced that this is just a misunderstanding or does he still have something to prove? The girl realized that she had made a mistake with the guy, but she was angry with him, so she accused him of prostitution and said that they would detain him for seven days and impose a fine of $5,000. Yi Hong asked, if this is an accusation against him, then shouldn't it also take action against the policewoman who tried to seduce him at the hotel? 
The girl tried to prove that she was fulfilling a public duty, but they were interrupted by a policeman who brought the guy's luggage. Yi Hong examined his bag, which the officer was holding in his hands right in front of him. Officer Zhao did not want to just put up with the fact that Yi Hong would go unpunished and asked to turn everything inside out. Yang Ze was already worried about his new friend, because a lot of time had passed and he still hadn't left the interrogation room. The guy decided to brighten up the situation a little and asked the security guard if he was tired of standing in one position for so long. The guard did not react to Yang Ze in any way and simply ignored his words, which made the guy a little angry. But in the interrogation room everything was much more interesting than in the corridor, because the police would soon begin to examine Yi Hong's luggage. The officer asked Zhou if he should turn everything out and the girl asked to search all the things thoroughly. The man agreed and first of all put down a strange plant given by the old fox. Next, the police officer adjusted his gloves and opened the zipper of the luggage bag. The man dumped all the garbage that was there, there was nothing unusual, except for a couple of t-shirts, books and personal hygiene products. But in addition to small debris, a small dagger in a leather holster fell from the edge of the bag. Officer Zhao immediately realized that this knife could give the guy a good beating, and Yi Hong was already expecting new suspicions. The girl said that carrying a blade in public threatens people and their safety, so they will confiscate the item, and he will serve five days in jail. Yi Hong said that he would not object, he also added that apparently the officer would not give up without a fight, and for him it was even pleasant to receive accusations from such a beauty. The girl was angered by a caustic compliment from the guy and she got up from her chair out of anger. The girl ordered Li Kai to take the guy back to the isolation ward, keep him there for five days and keep an eye on him for a minute. Li Kai confirmed the girl's words and said that he would start executing the order right now. An irritated Yi Hong could only sigh heavily, because he couldn't do anything with such a policewoman. Before leaving, Yi Hong advised Officer Zhou that she should thoroughly interrogate the guy with the tattoo, because the answers might surprise her, but the girl said that she could cope without advice and knew her job. Yi Hong said that he did not wish anything bad to the girl, but simply informed her and asked her to keep this in mind. The guy left the interrogation room and the girl barely pressed her lips together in anger, she was very annoyed that she had arrested the wrong person. At the exit, Yi Hong was waiting for Yang Ze, who did not leave, but continued to wait for the guy at the door. Then a man approached the guys, who aroused Yi Hong's interest. The man was dressed in a formal uniform, wearing a black shirt, black trousers and shoes, and carrying a small bag. The man told Officer Lee that he had completed all the proper procedures for the client and paid the fine, then he asked if they could be free. The officer replied that of course they could leave and he would kindly escort them both to the exit. Yang Ze asked his lawyer Jean if they could also release his new friend, but the officer said that he was suspected of illegally carrying a weapon and must serve a sentence of five days. Yang Ze stood up like a pillar and told his lawyer to get his new friend out of here, otherwise the guy himself will stay here. Jean tried to postpone the issue of Yi Hong's release until the morning and once again offered to take Yang Ze home, and tomorrow they would help their new friend together. Yang Ze said that he doesn't need to listen to the lawyer's tricks, just yes or no, but in case Jean refuses, then there is no point in pulling him out. Jean was dissatisfied, but adjusting his glasses, he promised that he would take care of Yi Hong, he asked the guys to wait here until he got everything sorted out with the papers, and then they would leave together. Yang Ze said that it should be like this from the beginning, for the guy it doesn't matter how long it takes, but the most important thing is the end result and that his friend gets out of the isolation ward. Jean said that he understood the task and would immediately help the guy to get out. Meanwhile, Yi Hong stood and wondered how this lawyer would be able to convince Officer Zhou, but it looked very interesting. Officer Li led the guys into a small cell and said that they could stay here together for the first time. Yi Hong asked Yang Ze why he was helping him if he didn't even ask for it or hint at it. Yang Ze said that he knew that Yi Hong did not ask him for help, this was completely his personal idea, the guy explained that they were destined to meet by fate. Yi Hong warned his new friend that he could get into trouble if he trusted his instincts so blindly in the future. Yang Ze said that he cheated a couple of times, but he could use a real friend like Yi Hong, and anyway, he didn't do anything, and the lawyer handles everything. Yi Hong said that this is not what he meant, but seriously, Yang Ze could have simply been killed. Yang Ze said that this is impossible, 
because in his twenty years of strange life he has never made enemies for himself, and besides, the guy is one of those who always loses. Yi Hong warned the guy to be careful when he leaves this place, especially with his entourage, and it is better to hire security guards if Yang Ze can afford it. Yi Hong finished his instructions to his new friend and closed his eyes to rest for a while. The guys sat opposite each other and Yang Ze continued to look at his tired comrade. Fifteen minutes later, Officer Li and the lawyer walked down the corridor through all the cells, holding a plant in their hands. The officer counted his fingerprint and opened the door to the cell to the guys who were sitting there. The officer and lawyer went inside along with all of Yi Hong's belongings that were taken from him. Yang Ze and Yi Hong immediately looked towards the doors at the officer and the lawyer. Officer Li told Yi Hong that he was free to go away with his new friend. Next, the policeman handed the guy's bag and asked him to check if everything was in place, and as for the knife, it had to be confiscated, since it was an illegal item. Meanwhile, the lawyer was holding the same pot of plant that the old fox had given. Next, the officer with a bag in his hands pointed both guys to the exit and said that they could leave. Yi Hong couldn't believe his luck, he was finally freed from all the inconveniences, but he still needs to figure out how to get the dagger back. Yang Ze and his new friend, along with the lawyer, left the cell and walked along the corridor towards the exit. A red car was waiting for them on the street in front of the detention center, which was supposed to pick up the guys. The trio immediately paid attention to the bright car, Yang Ze seemed to be ready for this. Yi Hong wondered who it could be and why they were met right in front of the detention center. The red car was running and its headlights were shining brightly, but Yi Hong still didn't have answers to all the questions in his head. The car door opened and a slender and beautiful girl came out and looked straight at the guys. The lawyer reported to the girl that everything had been settled and Yang Ze no longer had any problems, Miss Yang thanked the lawyer for his good work. The girl turned to Yang Ze, she was preparing to scold him, she told the guy that she doesn't care what he does outside, but also asked him to stop forcing the police to come to the house to post bail for the guy. Yang Ze replied that, as he had already said, after returning from abroad, she would go her own way, and he would go his own way and the guy himself was ready to take responsibility for what he was doing. The girl's name was Yang Minxing, she said that there were reporters on the spot who sent her photographs demanding ransom, does Yang Ze really want the whole city to know about his affairs? The guy replied that he himself could not expect this, he just wanted to relax and not get involved in problems with the police. Yang Ze said that if the girl was done with her lectures and teachings, then he would leave first. Yang Minxin asked the guy where he would go, to his hacker group, but the guy rudely replied that it was none of her business. Yi Hong stood nearby and listened to the dialogue between the two relatives and tried to understand what could have happened to these two. Yang Menxing told the guy that their father was really not doing well and he really wanted to see Yang Ze, so it was better for him to go with the girl. Yang Ze replied that he knew about his condition and was confident that nothing would happen to him in the next year and a half. Indignant, Yang Menxing asked how Yang Ze could say such things about her father, who raised the guy. Yang Ze was not at all moved by the girl's words and asked what she wanted, did Yang Menxing really feel guilty, but the guy pointed out that she was primarily concerned about the image of Yang's company and that his reputation would have a bad effect on this. Yang Menxing realized that she would not be able to reach her brother and therefore simply fell silent. The girl turned her back to Yang Ze, not wanting to continue her instructive lectures. The girl's attention fell on the guy who stood with a bag and a pot in his hands, she remembered that he was walking with her brother and lawyer. Yang Menxing told Yi Hong that although she didn't know the guy, she saw that her brother trusted him, so she asked him to keep Yang Ze away from such places and troubles. Yang Ze asked his sister to respectfully communicate with his new friend, because he was not the one who brought him there and was definitely not a bad influence. Yi Hong, who had no family, told the guy that he didn't know about the relationship with his parents, but Yang Ze, like a real son, should come to his parents while they were feeling bad, because the guy could lose them at any moment. Yang Ze asked his new friend why he sided with his sister, but Yi Hong replied that he was telling the truth and there was nothing wrong with going and visiting his family. Yi Hong said that it was already late, which means it was time for him to leave the family company and go about his business, but Yang Ze did not want to let his friend go. He tried to ask Yi Hong when they would meet again, to which he replied that if it was meant to be, fate would bring them together again. 
Yang Ze asked the guy where he was going and said that he could give him a ride, after which he assured that he would go to his parents today. Yi Hong simply walked away and did not respond to Yang Ze's requests, and the guy had already gotten into his sister's car. The lawyer asked Yang Ze not to worry and go home, and he could take care of his friend himself. Yang Ze thanked the lawyer and asked him to get the guy's contact information, to which Jean said that he would do that first. And so the lawyer got into his car and went after Yi Hong, who had already disappeared from the horizon. Yang Menching told her brother that since the lawyer would take care of his friend, they could immediately go to their parents' house. The guy didn't answer, and Yang Menching, sighing heavily, took him to her parents' house to visit her father. The lawyer's car caught up with Yi Hong, who was walking along a mountain road in deep loneliness, after which lawyer Jean offered the guy his services as a driver so that he would not bother with a taxi or walking. Yi Hong did not resist for a long time and, expressing gratitude, got into the car with the lawyer. Yi Hong was even more interested in the lawyer's identity than in his new friend Yang Ze. He assessed Jean as being efficient and having a decent attitude towards his work, but still he was hiding something from the others. The lawyer asked if the guy had found a decent place to stay or should he put him in a hotel, but Yi Hong replied that he would stay in the Haishu district at the Jiangyao residence. The guy apologized to the lawyer for creating a lot of trouble for him and disturbing him greatly. Jean asked the guy not to worry, because ultimately it was his job to sort out such problems. Yi Hong grew up here, studied, lived, cried and was traumatized, this country has always been his home, and this city will forever remain his home. The lawyer's car stopped in front of the barrier that led to the residence. Jean asked if this was the place Yi Hong should come to and the guy replied that most likely it was. The Jiangwo residence looked luxurious, especially at night when the lanterns and rooms were lit. Yi Hong thanked the lawyer and said that he would come out here, but Jean asked him not to be so polite, because he is Yang Zhe's friend, and therefore his friend too. The man handed Yi Hong a business card and said that he could be contacted with any questions, whenever the guy needed something. Yi Hong took the business card in his hands and the lawyer said that it was a very long walk from these roads to the residence, which means he had to give the guy a ride. A barrier stood in the way of the car and Jean very loudly asked that it be raised as soon as possible. Yi Hong took a closer look at the strange lawyer and began to suspect something unclean about him. The kind guy who was in charge of the barrier tried to find out in which block and part the man lived in order to register his car, but Jean explained that he was just giving a ride to a friend. The guy said that he couldn't do anything, because these are the rules, but then he apparently recognized someone in the person of the lawyer. The security guard asked the lawyer if his name was Jean Jia, but the guard asked him to be quiet. The lawyer asked who the guy was addressing, and he said that he was Tai Nu from Nanshi village. Jean called the guy crazy and, handing over his license, asked him to register it as quickly as possible. The guard looked at the license and apologized to the man, saying that he had confused him with someone else. Jean asked the security guard to check in quickly because he was in a hurry to give his friend a ride home. Yi Hong wondered what this lawyer could be hiding, and he also realized that he needed to be careful with this man. Yi Hong asked the lawyer not to bother and added that he himself was able to walk from here, it would not be difficult for him. Jean parked his car in front of the barrier and Yi Hong got out through the passenger door. The lawyer tried to say something to the guy, but Yi Hong asked him to go home quickly, because it was already late. Indeed, it was late at night outside, and after a couple of hours in the isolation ward and other procedures, Yi Hong was seriously tired. Now the guy was already standing at the entrance to the residence and was waiting for that same rest that he could not find for the last couple of days of flights and overnight stays in the police. Yi Hong believed that this must be exactly the place and, using his map, opened the doors. The guy entered the building with all his things in his hands, now he only wanted peace and relaxation. Yi Hong walked to the elevator and called it, waiting for the elevator, he hoped that the adventures for this night were over. Meanwhile, in the bathroom, someone was taking a shower and listening to music loudly from their phone. She was a beautiful and slender girl who was taking a shower before going to bed. Finally, Yi Hong was able to enter the elevator and go to the floor he needed. The guy left and walked further along the corridor in search of a suitable door to his apartment. The girl in the shower had already turned off the water and stopped her water treatments. The last drops were dripping from the shower, but the girl was no longer in the stall. After finishing, she went to her room. 
Yi Hong took out the key from his pocket and opened the door to his apartment, trying to find peace. The guy opened the door, after which he quietly and carefully entered, hoping to meet a soft bed. The joyful guy was already in the living room and holding his plant in his hands, he was preparing to disassemble his bag. But then something distracted him from sorting out his luggage, he saw someone stranger in his house. And the stranger was the same beauty from the shower, who walked naked around the living room and dried herself with a towel. The girl rubbed her face and with her blue eyes saw a stranger in the apartment. She was immediately overcome by panic and, covering herself with a towel, she began screaming at the entire residence. The girl ordered the guy not to move and, pressing the button, called security from the first floor for help. Yi Hong immediately tried to assure the girl that he was not bad and did not want this, there was just a misunderstanding, he suggested going out now, waiting for the girl to change clothes and talk normally. The guy who eats the spirit rushed out of the apartment, grabbing his pot and a bag of things. The frightened girl did not have time to make out his words, and Yi Hong understood that he had gotten himself into yet another trouble. The security called by the girl came very quickly, two men pushed themselves out of the elevator. The security guard who recognized Jean said that the guy was acting suspiciously at the gate and was now bothering the residents, and he also invited the intruder to the police station. Yi Hong recognized the annoying guard and realized that he was starting to really piss him off. Yi Hong told the guards that he could explain everything and he did not want to cause any harm to the girl. But the guards tried to grab him and asked him to leave all explanations for the police, who would arrive soon. Yi Hong was able to dodge the angry guard's hand and grabbed his bag tighter. The experienced mercenary managed to first hit one of the guards in the face with his bag. Next, he tripped him up and hit the guard on the back with the same bag to knock him down. One of the guards was already lying on the floor and another, who was watching this, decided to come to his aid. The man indignantly asked how he dared to touch his friend and, with a baton in his hands, attacked Yi Hong. Yi Hong decided to use the same magical and important flower given by the old fox. The guy deftly threw the pot with the plant into the air, which distracted the guard, who was looking up. Yi Hong realized that right now he needed to take advantage of the right moment and clenched his fist as tightly as possible. Then, without letting go of the bag, he swung his freed hand from the pot towards the daring guard. A very strong blow to the nose came from the guy, which the guard was unable to parry. From the strong blow, the guard fell backwards onto the floor, keeping his defeated comrade company. Now both guards, who did not want to listen to the guy's excuses, were lying on the floor of the corridor. And Yi Hong caught a pot with a plant, which during the entire time of striking did not manage to fall to the floor. Yi Hong stood proudly with a pot in his hands against the background of the lying and beaten guards of the residence. The girl, whose name was Miss Tang, came out of the door to ask if the guards were able to catch that pervert. Yi Hong began to explain everything from his side, he showed the key and said that he opened the door with his key. The guards were trying to find out where the guy might have this key and asked the girl if she knew this guy. Ms. Tang made it clear that she is not the owner, but she signed a three-year lease with the management and she has the right to use this house, especially since she has been living here for more than a year. Yi Hong said that it was most likely that the management of the residence rented out his house without permission or warning him. Yi Hong ordered the guard to immediately contact management to resolve this conflict. The guy immediately demanded an adequate explanation of what was happening in his house. The security guard, Tai NYU, said he would call his superiors right away to clear things up. The security guard called the boss's phone, it was half past one in the morning. The man, of course, was sleeping at that time and displeasedly asked the guard what he needed at such a late hour? The security guard told the manager on the phone that Miss Tang was in trouble, at first the sleepy man did not understand who he was talking about, but then realized that it was Tang Shu, who lived in a huge apartment on the seventh floor. The manager said that he would come there immediately and ask the security guard to behave smartly and show all his good attitude without getting involved in conflicts. The guard replied that he understood everything and told Yi Hong that he would have to wait a little, the manager was already on his way. Fifteen minutes passed, but for Yi Hong, who desperately wanted to sleep, this time lasted an eternity. Yi Hong asked how long he still had to wait and the guard suggested calling back and checking with the manager. Here you could hear the elevator ascending to the floor and the security guard said that the manager had already arrived. 
The manager ran as fast as he could and apologized to Yi Hong for making him wait so long, he introduced himself, his name was Su Jangyu, the man assured that he would help with the apartment. The manager told Yi Hong that he could just call him Little Xiao if it was convenient, and then he reached into his pocket where there was a pack of cigarettes. He took out a pack of cigarettes and offered Yi Hong a treat, but the guy refused, citing the fact that this was a public place, and especially since there was a girl standing here. Yi Hong said that he did not need any explanation, he demanded an immediate solution to the problem with the apartment. Little Xiao asked the guy to calm down and have a good rest today, he also assured that he would resolve all the issues with the management and tomorrow there would be no one in his apartment. Yi Hong said that he would let the manager handle everything, but now he was very sleepy, the manager called him along and said that there was a five-star hotel nearby and they would contact their administration. Yi Hong paid attention to Tang Shu, he noticed that this girl was really beautiful. He didn't expect to see her like this after she took a shower, without makeup, still being beautiful is a very good indicator for girls. But despite all her advantages, he cannot allow the girl to stay and live here, because in any case it would be better for him to live alone. The manager was concerned about whether the guards were hurting the guy, but they unanimously said that Mr. He was proficient in martial arts and had taught them a good lesson himself. In the city at night, the car with Yi Hong and the manager had already arrived at the very hotel where the guy would spend the night. After a short conversation at the reception, Yi Hong headed to his room to definitely rest after a busy night. The guy took out the key card that the hotel administration handed him and opened the door to his room. The room was spacious, but what Yi Hong was most attracted to was the bed, which beckoned him to collapse and fall asleep on it right now. After a quick shower, Yi Hong picked up the jug of water that was on the table and poured himself a glass. The guy had not drunk or eaten anything for a long time, so the water looked very tempting in his eyes. The guy greedily took a couple of sips and sat down on a chair and took out his mobile phone. Yi Hong decided that he needed to call Old Fox after everything he had been through today. Old Fox immediately picked up the phone and asked the guy how he liked the Hot Springs Hotel. Yi Hong said that he was very happy about everything, so much so that he wanted to tear his little plant into pieces. The Old Fox asked him not to do this, but rather to tell him what makes him so unhappy, Yi Hong said that his boss is already the best in collecting information, and therefore he should find out about it himself. Old Fox said that if something happens in Europe, then his heavenly eyes system can easily track everything down, but Yi Hong is now in China, so he better tell him what happened at night and if it is the boss's fault, then he will fix everything. Yi Hong said that he was fine and didn't need anything, he just didn't want to be a quiet and lovely boy, and he also asked Old Fox to tell him all the details of the mission in advance. Old Fox asked Yi Hong to be simpler, because it was only his first day in his country, for the first time in 10 years, and the boss also asked him to tell him about how his day went. The guy took a cigarette out of the pack and, lighting it, began to tell everything that happened to him last night. The cigarette had already been smoked and Yi Hong finished his story with a story about a conflict with the guards. The old fox said that he could not even think of such bad luck for the guy, he added that this hotel had some big foundations and the boss was going to instruct the guy to deal with them, and then manage the hotel, if everything went smoothly he would let him know. Yi Hong asked his boss not to mock him and tried to find out more information about his mission. The boss asked not to call him Old Fox, he is not at that age yet, it's better to just be Su's mentor or Su's professor. Yi Hong assumed that Mentor Xiao was now on vacation in Hawaii and there were two girls in bikinis there, one of whom was his student, and he was right. Xiao wondered how the guy determined this and Yi Hong explained that with the help of the wind speed he has about six, and at this time the professor likes to stare at beautiful girls, and his relationship with the Kardashian student was going very well, and besides, she has a lot beautiful girlfriends. Yi Hong said that it suited the professor's personality perfectly, and Xiao praised the guy for his abilities in the world of ranking analysis and diagnostic skills. Yi Hong asked Old Fox to stop praising himself and asked what his next mission in China was. Xiao told his subordinate to go to the police station in the morning, he would meet someone there, and Lise had already agreed on his work. Yi Hong immediately became suspicious and asked about the police station, if his boss wanted to make the guy an officer. The fox explained that after going there, his identity will remain as an officer, he will be able to act of his own free will, so everything is fine. 
Xiao said that if the guy was there, the cops would start to change the way they worked, and Yi Hong tried to find out if he wouldn't just be an officer, he definitely had to have some other job. The old fox said that everything could be so simple, now the guy only needs to know this, he also asked if Yi Hong remembers the girl he saved in the desert of Egypt. The guy tried to remember the portrait of a wounded girl from the desert and he succeeded. Yi Hong replied that of course he remembered, but also asked why his boss was interested in this. The fox said that it is good that the guy remembers her, because they will have to meet in the future, now he has returned to his country. When the guy returns, he must begin to resolve some issues that have bothered him for many years, he has grown up and it is time for Yi Hong to fight for himself. Next, the old fox began to describe the girl's appearance and her figure, she was one of those ladies who kept him company on the beach. With a little envy, Yi Hong thought that not everyone can afford to live like the old fox, he also called him sociable and honest, perhaps, just like the boss said, the guy needs to free himself from the pain that happened in the past, maybe that's why Xiao and sent him home. After talking with Yi Hong, Xiao went into the water a little and dialed Falcon's contact on his phone. The man sat in his office, boringly watching at the computer monitor. But then he was distracted from his routine activity by the phone, which unexpectedly rang. A man dressed like an ordinary office worker looked at the phone and picked up the receiver. The man didn't answer the phone for about seven seconds, waiting for the other person's words. This was a special way of communicating with each other, at first they are silent for seven seconds and check each other's identity, the man recognized the mentor in this way. The fox told his friend that he had a talented person for him, which the man asked for, he ordered the guy to organize a job at the Chumen District Police Station. Falcon asked if it would be a waste of time to let a talented guy work as an officer, but Xiao asked him not to worry, it was just personality and the guy could change the culture of the precinct. Falcon asked whether he should report this to his superiors, but Serge replied that the man should not tell anyone about this, let it remain between them, especially since he gave him a gift that would shock the whole world. Sokol tried to find out more about the gift to the guy, but Serge did not answer anything, he said that everything would be known over time and the policeman assured him that he would arrange everything. Xiao Xingbei is a well-respected figure in Europe, he is a well-known figure in astrophysics, a Nobel Prize nominee and a professor at Harvard University, in addition to the nickname of the Old Fox, he is also known as Apollo. Meanwhile, at the hotel where Yi Hong checked in last night, the guy decided to do a little training for himself. Already tired, Yi Hong completed a thousand push-ups, he was very tired, although this is the norm for him. Next, the guy went to the shower and, with a relieved soul, began his morning water procedures. He had not seen a shower for a couple of days and therefore hot water was almost a dream for him in these realities. After showering, Yi Hong looked at the time, hurriedly got dressed and left his hotel room. The guy was warmly welcomed at the reception by employees and administrators. Yi Hong responded with the same kindness and eagerly greeted them in return, with a smile on his face and a good mood. Once outside, Yi Hong quickly hailed a taxi and indicated to the driver that he needed to go to the Chumen District Police Station. Yi Hong was familiar with this city and he looked around at everything around him, trying to assess how much it had changed in those ten years. Finally the taxi driver stopped at the stairs that led straight to the police station. One of the employees met the guy and called him by name, he invited him to come inside. Yi Hong asked the policeman how he could address him after a firm handshake. The man introduced himself as Zhang Yuan Gang, the supervisor here, and invited the guy to follow him. Yuan Gang said that he had already talked to the head of the department, but first he had to take the guy to the office. Yi Hong appreciated the old fox's methods and the officer had already brought him to that very office. The employee quickly introduced the new team and pointed out where the form with the badge was located, after which he warned Yi Hong that he was still in the status of a newcomer. Next, the supervisor offered to meet new colleagues on today's shift, and the guy could see the rest another time, and he also asked to respect the methods of the department, despite who the guy had worked before. One of the employees interrupted the conversation, telling the supervisor that he wanted to apply for leave that evening. The supervisor asked who could replace the officer if he left that evening, because there was a personnel crisis in the department, but the officer was not interested in this, he wanted his vacation. The warden told his employee Cheng that he was also aware of the situation that had developed in their station. 
The supervisor also said that the management went to the headquarters to report this problem, so there is no need to throw tantrums, then the man looked at Yi Hong. After the first day of work and getting to know the team, Yi Hong walked along the corridor of the hotel where he had been given a room. The guy noticed that someone's shadow was visible behind him, someone was hiding behind the wall and watching him. Yi Hong did not attach great importance to this now and decided to simply open the doors to his room. A girl was watching the guy, and when she saw Yi Hong closing the door of her room, she came out from behind the wall. The girl ran as fast as she could in her heels towards the closing door. She was able to grab the handle before the door slammed shut and walked through it. Entering the room, the girl slammed the door herself and began to stare at Yi Hong. He walked past the guy and Yi Hong thought, what could be wrong with this woman? The girl looked around the room and sat down on the guy's bed without even asking permission. She lifted her skirt a little, which raised a lot of questions from Yi Hong, he remembered that this was apparently the same Tang Shu. The girl took an erotic pose lying on the bed and pulled some piece of paper in her hands. Yi Hong took the hint and took the piece of paper from the girl's hands into his own to familiarize himself with the contents. It was a rental agreement that the guy apparently needed to sign. Yi Hong immediately realized that this was the same girl about his house, apparently she wants the guy to sign the contract. The girl continued to lie in a flirtatious position on the bed while Yi Hong carefully read the contract. He noticed that these girls were different, because Tang Shu had blue eyes, and this one had brown eyes, which means they are different people. The girl asked the guy if he had finished reading the contract, if so, then let him sign, otherwise she would scream that she was being harassed. Yi Hong decided that if the girl has so much courage and insists, then he will play this game. The guy took the contract in his hands and went to the table with pens to sign it. A few strokes of his pen and Yi Hong finished, after which he placed the contract on the other edge of the table. The girl became interested in what the guy did there and she took the contract to make sure there were signatures. It was written there that Yi Hong is deaf and dumb and does not know what the girl is talking about, and he also does not understand what kind of contract this is. The girl thought that they didn't tell her this, but it's not so important anymore, it's better to forget now, because the main thing is his signature. The girl sat down on her knees and began to write a message to the guy herself to explain what she wanted. The girl handed her message to the guy, who took it in his hands and prepared to read it. The guy read out loud that if he didn't immediately sign the contract, she would scream that Yi Hong was molesting her, which scared the girl. The girl asked how it turned out that the guy was not deaf and dumb, and Yi Hong replied that she heard everything perfectly well herself. The girl was thinking about how to settle this matter because otherwise they would have to move out, and the rent they paid would be cancelled. Yi Hong held the contract in his hands and said that this was proof of their fraud, and he added that he was a police officer. This news made the girl's heart beat even faster, she tried to understand what consequences could await her. The girl said that it doesn't matter that the guy works for the police, because they were treated unfairly, they signed an agreement with the housing agency and the manager assured them that there was nothing to worry about, and then Yi Hong arrived and they were forced to move. The guy said that they should be able to get a house as long as they can afford it, the girl protested, citing the economy and it was financially impossible for them. Yi Hong again rightly reminded that the house in question is his apartment and right now he wants to live there alone, and what the new residents feel there does not interest him. The girl heard the guy's words and, out of anger, even clenched her fists tighter and prepared to answer. If a guy insists that he and his girlfriend move in immediately, then she will shamelessly come to Yi Hong's boss and tell her that she is pregnant with his child and he is trying to kick her out of the house. The guy was a little shocked by this news, he understood that the consequences of such actions could be very bad for his reputation and career. Yi Hong pointed out that such actions were very vile on the part of the girl, but the interlocutors referred to the fact that she was forced to do this. Yi Hong became more accommodating about his housing and decided that his house was really big and there was enough space for everyone, so it was better to just let them stay in the apartment and not get involved in big problems. The girl said that if the guy has nothing more to say, then she is already leaving and said goodbye to Yi Hong. But Yi Hong had already changed his mind and asked the girl to stop for a moment and listen to him. The girl said that Yi Hong cannot change his words, because a man must be responsible for what he says. Yi Hong asked the girl not to worry and asked if she would drive or walk. The girl replied that she would go by car and in response asked why the guy was so interested in this. 
Yi Hong said that he was thinking about returning home and wanted to propose heading there together. The girl said that she was scared for a couple of seconds by the guy's words, but okay, of course she'll give him a ride. After just a couple of seconds, the couple arrived at the Jiangyao residence, in the seventh building, where Yi Hong's apartment was located. Yi Hong stood in front of the girls and said that since no one lives in the farthest room, he chooses it as his apartment. The girls did not object and added that Tang Shu had already carried out a complete cleaning there and prepared it for move-in. Although Yi Hong understood that this was unfair to him, he also realized that the girls themselves had been deceived, so he thanked them for a room in his own apartment. Finally, the girls introduced themselves fully, Tang Shu, whom Tang Shu had already known, is a university student, and the second girl's name is Zhang Lolo, he is a flight attendant at South Airlines. The guy introduced himself again and said that his name was Yi Hong, and he also indicated that he was pleased to meet his neighbors. Zhang Lolo said that a little later Tang Shu would give the guy a set of bed linen and the guy asked how much he owed for it all. The girls this time were more kind and assured that they did not need any money, Lolo also added that they owed it to the guy for his hospitality. Yi Hong laughed a little at this before saying that he would go unpack his things first so the girls could do their own thing. And after a short conversation with the new neighbors, Yi Hong entered his room, holding a flower in his hands. The room was not overly luxurious, it was more like a room in a decent hotel, but to Yi Hong even this seemed like paradise after long flights and a night in the isolation ward. After Yi Hong checked into his room, he took a long time to sort things out and put things in order, and finally, after all this, he was able to sit down to rest. The guy sat by the window and looked at the plant given by the old fox, it seemed to interest him very much. The guy's eyes also noticed that the sprout had grown a little since the moment he discovered it. Then one of the new neighbors started knocking on the door and asked Mr. Landlord for permission to enter. Yi Hong told the girl that she could come in and her slender legs in pink slippers with bunnies stepped across the threshold of the door. Tang Shu held some clothes in her hands and said that Lolo wants the guy to accept this as a gift. The dull Yi Hong first tried to think about what this could mean, and then simply nodded his head. Tang Shu's kindness did not end there, the girl thanked Yi Hong for giving the girls the opportunity to stay in this apartment. The guy said that now it even seems like a plus to him, because there are people who not only help clean the room, but also pay the rent. The girl said that she would pay the rent on time and keep the room clean, and about yesterday she wanted to apologize, she should not have blamed Yi Hong. Yi Hong said that he should be the one apologizing, but now all the misunderstandings have been cleared up, they can put aside the grievances, the girl also suggested forgetting it and leaving it in the past. Yi Hong once again confirmed the girl's words and asked not to call him Mr. Master because it sounds too awkward, it's better to call him by his name. The girl seemed to be preparing for this and said that the guy's first and last name meant finding a leaf. Then Tang Shu said with admiration that she would call her new neighbor just a leaf. Then the phrase little brother stuck in the guy's head, he had this nickname in childhood. Memories came flooding back to the guy and little Yi Hong was playing with a girl his age, whom he called a snowflake on the street in winter, in very snowy weather. The girl kept calling Yi Hong little brother and asking him to hold her hand and wish her good night before he fell asleep. Promises are vulnerable to the cruelty of the passing time, it was 20 years ago, the girl was taken away by her new parents. Tang Shu saw that Yi Hong was thinking and started calling him little brother so that he would wake up faster. She asked if everything was okay with him and why he stopped suddenly, the guy replied that he remembered one person and was thinking a little. The girl did not leave the room, but began to examine it to find something interesting, and then one object was able to capture her attention. The girl looked at the fox plant and asked what it was, the smell was like an orchid, but not like it at all. Yi Hong said that he himself was not sure about the type of flower, because this plant was given to him by a friend recently. Tang Shu said that the plant has a strange appearance, but at the same time a little cute, the careless girl touched the leaves of the sprout. And the leaves turned out to be not simple, but thorny, Tang Shu injured her index finger on the plant. Yi Hong immediately became concerned about this and asked if the girl was okay and walked closer to her. Tang Shu showed her wound on her finger and added that this plant can stab people. The blood of a girl remained on one of the leaves of the plant, which looked very frightening. Yi Hong tried to ask Tang Shu if the wound was serious, but the girl assured him that everything was fine, 
it just needed to be treated with medical alcohol. Tang Shu left the guy's room and went to the medicine cabinet to get rubbing alcohol to treat the wound. The guy looked at the plant again and realized that this thing could be really dangerous if Tang Shu got hurt on a leaf. Next, the guy heard the words of Lolo, who told Tang Shu that things were very bad for the girl, really bad. He ran out of his room as quickly as possible and tried to catch up with Tang Shu before she did anything. Yi Hong quickly ran to the hotel and asked Tang Shu what happened to her. Lolo replied that she was fine, but the girl herself was not, and she also asked why he was so concerned about her friend. Meanwhile, Tang Shu herself shrugged, showing that she herself did not understand anything. Yi Hong said that it didn't matter and asked the girl why she was screaming so loudly, and the girl told him that she had a 12-hour flight to Kunming, but she slept through it. And since she slept through the flight, this would be deducted from her salary, but Tang Shu chuckled and said that her flight was on Sunday, and today was only Saturday. This was a real relief for Lolo, she said that she could now continue to sleep and wake up at 10 tomorrow in order to have time for everything. Lolo said that she was hungry after sleeping and suggested that her friend go out to eat, and then go to the movies and go shopping. Tang Shu decided to invite her new neighbor to come with them, but Yi Hong refused, citing his night shift. Tang Shu agreed that work should come first and Lolo dragged her along. The day was already coming to an end and the sun was disappearing behind the horizon, illuminating the upper floors of the buildings. It has already become completely dark in some areas, which means Yi Hong's first shift will begin soon. Yi Hong's colleague explained that he should first warn the guy, in their jurisdiction, many unscrupulous individuals appear at night. They all have complex connections, it's better of course to keep your distance, he also asked you to just listen to his advice and stay away from trouble. Now the partners had already changed into their uniforms, it was the first time for Yi Hong to put a badge on his chest, but the excitement was not visible on his face. The guys found their car and headed straight towards it, at a leisurely pace. His partner offered to show Yi Hong around so that he could then patrol each area more thoroughly. After a short conversation between the partners, the car started moving and left the parking lot. The partner was driving and explained to Yi Hong that there were several important points in their area. One of them is the port, where rich children often gamble and ride horses, there may be fights, but usually they can be controlled. The second is a place where entertainment events are held, troubles usually happen here with drunk people and the last point is located in the area of several famous high schools, the safety of students is always a priority for the police. Today is Yi Hong's first day on patrol, so they better stay in the area of a few schools, usually nothing happens here. The guys stopped in front of the second middle school, which reminded Yi Hong of his childhood. The guy remembered how 11 years ago he was expelled from this school and he was upset about it. The partner warned Yi Hong that he would go check the pier and asked him to stay here and keep his eyes open. The partner said goodbye and the friendly cop said that they would see each other later when he returned. Meanwhile, a schoolgirl was trying to buy herself something to eat while shopping and didn't even suspect that she was being watched. A couple of thugs were watching the girl from behind the wall and trying to decide on a plan, one of them assured that nothing bad would happen and everything would be quiet. The skinny bandit told his accomplice that there was a police patrol nearby and that he probably shouldn't do this right now. The big guy with the nickname Tiger was not satisfied with this answer and he grabbed his accomplice by the collar. The thin boy was frightened of his healthy friend and understood that there was no way he could get away. The tiger said that it was just the police, and the gambler wants their gang to find and deliver their daughter, especially since the guys have a receipt. The tiger saw the cowardice of his accomplice and asked the fat man to follow the guy to the case. At that time, the fat man was taking a bite of a chocolate bar and standing in the shadow of the alley, so that the bandits themselves could not see him. He stood behind the tiger and agreed to help kidnap the girl and deliver her to her father. The tiger remained in the alley and watched as his guys approached Shu Yushi. The thugs tried to talk to the schoolgirl, but Shu Yushi was very frightened by their appearance. Yi Hong listened to the entire conversation, the bandits suggested that the girl just follow them so that no one would get hurt. After that, one guy went to Shu Yushi and the thugs to prevent them from committing the kidnapping. This guy turned out to be a brave schoolboy who covered Shu Yushi with his body and tried to find out from the bandits what they wanted. The skinny scumbag asked the guy who he was and where he came from, then he hinted that he should not interfere with their business if he did not want to get hurt. The schoolboy's name was Chen Yang and his friend, 
who stood behind him, said that the thugs were from the famous gang of heavenly wolves and it was better not to mess with them, the friend suggested leaving this matter to the police. Chen Yang was unshakable and said that he could not leave here and abandon their classmate Xu Yushi, if she had problems, then they had to help her right now. The fat man was amused by the guy's words and he went closer to him so as not to delay the matter. The fat man was able to hit Chen Yang with his huge belly and the schoolboy could not stand on his feet. Friends began to worry about their classmate so that he would not land with the back of his head on the asphalt. The guy simply flew away from the blow, as if he had jumped with his body on a vertical trampoline. But he was not left without help and Yi Hong grabbed him so that he would not be injured when he fell. Yi Hong asked the student if he was okay and Chen Yang replied that he didn't seem to be hurt. Next, the policeman asked to leave these thugs to him so he could deal with them. Yi Hong, like a real policeman, first showed loyalty and asked the guys to voluntarily leave the girl behind and go away. But the bandits were too bold and told the cop that it was better for him to get away from here if he didn't want any problems. Yi Hong did not understand such courage from the guys and became seriously angry, he understood that there could potentially be a fight. All actions took place in good lighting, because there was a lantern right above the hooligans, the skinny bandit ordered the fat man to pick up the schoolgirl. The fat man assured his accomplice that he would not have any problems with the little girl. The fat man grabbed the girl's hand, and she resisted and tried to break free, but poor Xu Yusi couldn't do anything. Yi Hong said that he was giving the fat man three seconds to let the schoolgirl go or else he would be held accountable. Yi Hong began his report, and the fat man even thought for a couple of seconds about whether it was worth it. On the count of three, the fat man finally let go of the girl's hand and threw her away from him. The skinny bandit ordered the fat man to beat up the policeman and the plump boy rushed into battle. The fat man tried to jump towards Yi Hong with his huge fists and completely knock him out. But Yi Hong was not a simple policeman, his past as a mercenary makes itself felt and he dodges a powerful blow. But the fat man did not stop there and continued his attempts to achieve his goals, each time receiving failures. At one point, the policeman caught the fat man making a mistake and hit the bandit in the open face with his elbow. The bully fell to the ground with a loud bang, and a smug Yi Hong began to look at his accomplice. The skinny scumbag was frightened by the policeman's reception and was afraid to imagine what would happen to him if his fat friend lay down so quickly. Yi Hong threateningly told the scumbag to let the girl go if he didn't want to end up like his friend. The thin bandit remembered Tiger's words, but also understood that if he resisted, Yi Hong would simply kill him with his strength. The bandit explained that Shu Yushi's father owed them money, and they were simply taking what should belong to them. The schoolgirl said that Xian Tiashen is her stepfather and she and her mother divorced a long time ago, so his debts have nothing to do with her. Yi Hong told the bullies that they had heard everything clearly from the schoolgirl herself, so they should not bother her. Here the tiger intervened in the conversation, who came out of the alley and asked the policeman what he would do if they did not leave the girl. The crowd of people gathered began to speak intimidatingly to Yi Hong about tiger, calling him the leader of the gang and the strongest guy in this area. Yi Hong did not give vent to emotions and said that he would detain all violators who interfere with order and tranquility in the area. The tiger called the policeman too brave for his position and asked if he was new for an hour. The cop replied that he was new and asked, so what? Tiger reminded that yesterday a policeman had already been beaten here and asked the guy if he wanted to repeat his fate. Yi Hong realized that the scumbag was referring to Officer Chen. Now it's no wonder why the law enforcement officer didn't want to stay on the night shift. Tiger also explained that in addition, Xian Tianshan owes them a lot of money and they have a long-term receipt, he owes their gang money and this is a fact. But since the debtor himself is hiding, they can, of course, demand money from his family, since the culprit himself is afraid to make contact. The thin bandit added that the receipt also contains the man's signature and imprint and it would be stupid to deny it. Yi Hong said that he believed in the strength of the guys and suggested that they sue the debtor with such a receipt. But these are just excuses, he pointed to the defeated fat man and told the rest of the criminals that they would end up the same way if they didn't lag behind the schoolchildren right now. The tiger pointed out to the policeman that he was very impudent in his words and actions and did not understand who was really in charge here. The bully began showing off his muscles in an attempt to intimidate the new cop. But Yi Hong was not an ordinary policeman. He laughed at the scumbag's attempts to intimidate him and called him a flea, 
of which he is not at all afraid. The tiger called the cop an arrogant idiot and said that now he will show how strong he is. The thug took a good run and ran towards the policeman at full speed, but the formidable tiger was interrupted by a phone call, the ringtone of a funny Chinese song coming straight from his pocket. The scumbag stopped and asked the policeman to hold off on the fight while he spoke on the phone. The scumbag picked up the phone and hung up, who is bothering him at such a late hour and what does he want? Yi Hong showed his indifference with all his appearance and waited for his opponent to finish speaking on the phone. Tiger received a call from a certain Zhang Biao, who complained that the bandit did not recognize his voice the first time. The scumbag was ordered to take several people with him and head to the port, immediately. The tiger obediently agreed with his interlocutor and looked at the policeman with displeasure. The scumbag said the cop could count that phone call as his luck for the day. The tiger instructed his skinny accomplice the monkey to deal with the fat man and immediately blow into the port after that. The skinny hooligan assured his boss that he would do everything and would soon be at the port. The monkey realized that without his leader he would not be able to resist the policeman and let go of the schoolgirl's hand. The scumbag told the officer that there was a misunderstanding, apologized and asked if he could pick up his friend. Yi Hong said that they could get away this time, but warned them not to catch his eye again, because next time he would not be so polite. The monkey saw that his fat friend was passed out and began to wake him up with small slaps. The fat man barely woke up and asked his friend for help to get up, after the knockout, he had little idea where he was. The monkey explained to his accomplice that they now needed to go to the port, and Yi Hong tried to calm the crowd and assured that everything was fine and the problems had been resolved. The fat man still remembered almost nothing and his memory returned to him gradually, so the monkey's words meant little to him. Here, after the words of the policeman, the fat man stopped and apparently his memory began to return to him. The big man looked back, recognizing the cop's voice, and conceived his new plan of revenge. The monkey tried to find out what his accomplice wanted, and the fat man replied that it was wrong to leave like that. He remembered Yi Hong as the person who knocked him out and ran at full speed towards him again. The monkey tried to stop his friend so that he would not get injured again, because he was still needed at the port. Yi Hong saw the toddler's acceleration and prepared to repel the scumbag's blow. The fat man tried to lean his whole body into his hand so as not to leave a chance for the policeman. But Yi Hong was also not a miss and their fists collided together, making a loud impact sound. Like something out of a superhero movie, a cop and a bandit clashed fists right in the middle of the street. After the guy's fists collided, Yi Hong removed his hand and the fat man felt severe pain all over his arm. The fat scumbag fell to his knees and said with annoyance that he had lost to the policeman. Everyone who watched this was amazed at how Yi Hong was able to defeat such a huge opponent. The policeman said that he would give the scumbag a second chance, but next time he would not get up after a fight, the fat man realized that this cop is not as simple as he seems. The bandit realized that the guy could not be an ordinary policeman and asked who Yi Hong really was. But Yi Hong didn't try to seem like someone else, he called himself a simple policeman and asked the bandits to never bother schoolchildren again. The frightened fat man looked at the cop and called him too good a cop. The monkey took his friend away and asked if his hand was all right, but the fat man complained that it was not. Then a vibration came from Yi Hong's pocket, which meant they were calling him on his mobile phone. It was his partner who had gone to the port not long ago, Yi Hong immediately answered the call. The man asked about the situation around the school, after which he called the guy to quickly come to the port, now he will send him the address. Yi Hong said that he would be there soon and threw off his partner, after which he looked at the schoolchildren. The kids thanked the policeman for protecting their classmate. Yi Hong noted Chen Yang's bravery and asked the children to quickly go back to school, he also said that in case of problems they should not hesitate to contact the police and got into his official car. The policeman quickly turned around and headed to the port to help his partners. Luo Ji told his classmates that they should immediately return to the dormitory because the streets were becoming unsafe. But his friend Chen Yang said that they had to go to the port, because the gang and the police were already there, but Luo Ji was not imbued with the same enthusiasm and said that it was not safe, especially at such a time. Chen Yang called his friend a coward, the guy explained that they could not get themselves into trouble in any way if this brave policeman was there, especially since they would just look and do nothing. Chen Yang did not want to persuade his friend for a long time and said that he and Xu Yushi could go to the dormitory, 
but Luo Zhi himself already ran after his friend towards the port. Meanwhile, the light was on in the port and nothing foreshadowed trouble or spoke of any problems. But closer, a huge group of people with cars was already standing on the road. Police and street gangs blocked traffic, and many cars simply stood still. The police finally arrived at the scene, two patrol cars stopped in front of a crowd of people. Also among the group of people was Yang Zi, to whom the girl pointed out the arriving police. One of the employees said over the loudspeaker that everyone here was suspected of illegal racing, he also asked not to resist, otherwise they would all be punished. One of the hooligans asked why there are only two policemen here, what can they handle? The policeman replied that there were fifty of them here, and the guy continued to laugh at the cops and asked where their reinforcements were, because half an hour had already passed. The main reinforcements were already at the entrances to the port, Yi Hong's official car. The guy pressed the brake pedal to appear in front of the gangs as effectively as possible. And he did it, he was able to stop the car in a skid, leaving smoke from the tires behind him. Two of the riders looked at the daring policeman who had arrived here spectacularly, and Officer Su was happy to receive help. Yi Hong got out of the official car and began to inspect the local guys. Yang Zi recognized his friend and his girlfriend tried to ask why he was looking at the cop like that, but the guy said that he was just staring. What was interesting for Yang Zi was that yesterday Hong was detained by the police and was in jail, and today he is working as a cop. Two arrogant guys began to make fun of the police, amused by the fact that only one car was sent to help. One of the employees asked Yi Hong why he came here alone, but Officer Su was not embarrassed. Yi Hong asked about the state of affairs and received the answer at the rich Cretans had gathered to have fun and fray the nerves of the police. Yi Hong asked if they were going to interfere in this, and Su replied that they were not afraid of the police, each of them had two tough lawyers, and the boss's phone would ring off the hook if they were detained, so it was better not to make a scene. Yi Hong was dissatisfied that they could not do anything about the arrogant majors, and Su simply patted him on the shoulder. Officer Yi Hong went to the majors to talk, but Su stopped him and asked him not to rush. The arrogant guy continued to bully the cops and tell them not to stand in his way. He also reminded that it would not be possible to arrest him and spat in the direction of the police. The brazen guy's spit fell right next to Su's shoes and the cop asked him not to cross the line. The policeman tried to explain to the guy to behave more modestly, but the arrogant teenager did not listen to him. Yi Hong decided to intervene and stand up for his partner, he asked the bully if he would like to apologize for this act. Yi Hong was already rolling up his sleeves as his colleagues tried to stop the policeman from fighting. The impudent guy said that apparently there was a mosquito squeaking somewhere and didn't even turn around in the officer's direction. Yi Hong asked Officer Su, isn't it a crime to insult and threaten the police? Officer Su confirmed his partner's words and said that all of the above are crimes. The arrogant teenager said that he could insult Yi Hong again if it was not clear to him at first. The mercenary did not tolerate such behavior and hit the impudent major right in the face. The boy began to fly away from this blow, Yi Hong knew how to hit people in the face, he had no equal in this skill. But the officer's hand did not allow the major to fly away or fall headlong on the asphalt, Yi Hong was able to grab the guy's forearm. Yi Hong, in addition to his previous prophylactic jab, decided to add a strong knee strike to the guy's stomach. At this point no one was holding the major back and he went on a free flight behind the backs of his friends. And finally, after its long journey in the air, the guy's body was able to land on the asphalt. Police cars were parked throughout the port, blinding the crowd with their lights. The majors were no longer so cool, they began to complain that the policeman dared to hit a civilian. Yi Hong began to read out the charges and the rights of the detainee, he was arrested for insulting a police officer, he could contact a lawyer or appeal to the court, he also advised no one to run away, because this would be regarded as an obstruction of the law. Two friends of the beaten man tried to show that they were not afraid of the policeman and that he would not be able to do anything to them. But Yi Hong didn't want to pay attention to them, so he simply pushed the teenagers aside with his shoulders and moved on. The officer approached the knocked out major and tried to take him by the collar. He grabbed the guy by the clothes and carried him with one hand to the police car to take him to the station. The teenagers surrounded the policeman and did not allow him to pass further, they rubbed their hands and flexed their fists. One of them told the cop that he couldn't just take this guy out of here, they wouldn't allow that. Officer Su asked his partner to leave everything and not do this, 
they would not have enough strength to resist the gangs. Yi Hong replied that they couldn't just leave it all like that and they definitely had to resolve this matter. Someone from the crowd shouted that the police were surrounded right now and they had better not move. It was a man accompanied by a monkey and a fat man, he asked what everyone was doing here now. All the teenagers ran to the guy and greeted him calling him boss, and the boss himself asked what happened here. One of the guys said that Bu Yong and the officer exchanged a few words, and the guy didn't think that the cop would be able to hit him, but now the policeman wants to arrest them all. The boss was surprised that the police in times like these were so bold that they could arrest gang members. The boss also said that Master Xiao was here and he didn't want to spoil his mood, and then took off his glasses. He turned to the policeman and told him that he could count himself lucky. Yi Hong paid attention to the new bandit, especially his narrow, piercing eyes, which seemed to look straight into his soul. The boss asked Su if the new officer knew about the rules here, if not, then it was better to explain to him and let the guy go. Officer Su ordered his partner to release the bully immediately and not touch him in the future. Yi Hong did not want to change his decision and told his partner that he was obliged to take him to the station. The boss said that it doesn't matter whether the officer lets the guy go or not, because today the police won't get out of this place alive. The man threw his glasses on the floor and broke them with the sole of his shoes. The boss ordered Tiger to do what his guys deem necessary and not to spare the police one bit. Su asked the scumbag not to be angry with the newcomer, and the boss said that if Yi Hong apologized on his knees and he liked it, he would think about it. Yi Hong was not aimed at a truce, he called the guy narrow-eyed and said that he was giving the last warning, the officer demanded to close his mouth and retreat if the scumbag did not want to be arrested. Yang Zi also watched as Yi Hong confronted the bandits, the guy didn't think that his friend could be so stupid, but now he can't help in any way, so he can only wait and watch. The boss called the policeman the most stubborn person he could meet, the guy could not allow himself to be talked to like that, and Yi Hong asked the thugs to attack him all at once so that he could leave them with memories of this evening. The boss told the policeman that he had chosen the path of death and Tiger ran towards him, raising his fist. Yi Hong could not be taken with a simple direct blow, he stopped the bandit's hand without much difficulty. But Tiger was not the easiest fighter, after the cop grabbed his fist, he began to prepare his knee for the blow. The reaction of the former mercenary could only be envied and he saw his opponent swing. With the same ease, he stopped the scumbag's knee with his free hand. And now Yi Hong began to carry out his techniques, first, he intercepted his opponent's forearm. Then the policeman turned his body and tried to throw the tiger with his back onto the asphalt. The officer successfully managed to throw his huge opponent over himself and send him to the ground. The tiger was already lying down without resistance, and Yi Hong also twisted his arm so that he could not move completely. The two guys watched as their comrade was defeated by an arrogant cop and realized that they couldn't stand by. The thugs looked at each other and decided to attack the policemen together. Now, screaming and threatening death, two teenagers try to attack Yi Hong. But the policeman is not afraid of this, he managed to react and kick one of them in the chest. Yi Hong also decided to deal with the second guy with a kick directly to the head. The policeman managed everything with unexpected ease, and now his foot was able to reach its goal and break the glasses on the scumbag's face. Yi Hong was able to knock out both of them with one movement of his leg, the guys didn't even have time to swing adequately before they were already lying unconscious. The teenagers fell onto the asphalt like sacks of potatoes and their threats looked very funny. The narrow-eyed boss thought that this policeman was not a person at all, because he was able to drop three opponents at once in less than a minute. All the police officers looked at the new officer with admiration, and Yang Zi said that his judgment about Yi Hong was correct. Yi Hong suggested that everyone who wanted to experience the effect of the law should not be shy and come right now. At the port, the local party with the cops was still going on, after Yi Hong put the teenagers face down on the asphalt, the majors were already calmer. The boss complained about the cop, he called the officer crazy, and he also threatened severe consequences for all this. The guy warned Yi Hong that if he dared to touch him, he could turn the entire police station upside down. Yi Hong asked the guy to get into the car himself, he named all the violations that the boss had managed to do, such as insulting and threatening the police, as well as inciting others to attack. Yi Hong immediately made it clear that he would not hesitate to take the guy by force and push him into the official car. The boss began to threaten the policeman, 
saying that his uncle was a major and could sort everything out, but Yi Hong would be left without a job. The impudent boy poked his index finger right in front of Yi Hong's face and the policeman simply broke it. The officer told the narrow-eyed bully that he talked too much for a serious person. Next, Yi Hong stepped on the guy's foot and hit him on the knee to further humiliate him in front of his friends. Yi Hong turned to his colleagues and asked them not to stand like a pillar, but to arrest the rest of the violators. The cops were very surprised by this order, but they had nothing to do, so they began handcuffing everyone. Officer Su told one of the hooligans that now they would not dare to just cause trouble for the police. The tiger angrily threatened all the policemen that they would very much regret this. And Yi Hong slammed the door of the official car and ordered the detainees to be quiet and not create more problems for themselves and law enforcement agencies. Then an expensive car arrived at the scene and Yi Hong thought that these were the same lawyers that his colleagues were talking about. Yi Hong explained to the guys that he is a police officer and if they have any questions, they can find him at the station and solve everything there, he also added that street racing is illegal, and citizens can test their driving skills in proper racing tracks. Officer Su recognized the people who came and understood that this was much more serious than the local gangs. Yang Zi also began to fear for his friend, because right now he was being rude to very serious people. The security guard leaned over to the passenger seat and told a certain Mr. Xiao that this officer was too arrogant, and he also offered to teach him a lesson in communication. The boss asked his subordinate if he really thought he could defeat the officer. The guard referred to the fact that if he did not try, he would never know the answer to this question. Mr. Xiao was not interested in this, the mobile game fascinated him more and he told the guard to act as he wanted. The guard straightened his tie and looked towards Officer Yi Hong with his piercing gaze. Just like all of Yi Hong's previous opponents, he went first to attack and ran towards the officer. The fighter tried to land a direct blow on Yi Hong's face, but he managed to dodge in time. This guy was much more capable than all the previous ones, it was no longer so easy for Yi Hong himself to catch him. Mr. Zhao's subordinate also tried to attack the policeman with a downward punch, but this trick also did not work. Yi Hong noted that this guy is very fast and much stronger than all the previous ones, and the bodyguard himself was surprised that the policeman could dodge. Yi Hong wanted to tell the guy about the speed of his movements and strikes, but he was interrupted by his opponent. The guy did not want to put up with the policeman and, realizing that he was not so simple, he took off his tie and jacket. The offender said that the policeman could only get all the answers to his questions in the hospital. Yi Hong recognized the guy and asked how the members of the 707th could end up working as a bodyguard. The bodyguard asked Yi Hong to be quieter and wave his fists more than his tongue. The guy tapped the toes of his shoes on the asphalt and prepared to attack Yi Hong. There was a good attempt at kicking the cop in the head and it was partially successful, because the edge of the shoe hit the cop's cheek. Yi Hong was left with a small scar on his left cheek and realized that this opponent was indeed serious. The bodyguard saw his result and was already thinking about how he could easily defeat the policeman. But Yi Hong wouldn't be a professional if it was so easy to beat him, the cop was able to put a block in front of the scumbag's leg in time. After blocking the blow, Yi Hong himself had already thrown his own direct punch right at the guy's face. He also managed to grab the bodyguard's leg and tried to push him onto his back. Before throwing his opponent to the ground, to be on the safe side, Yi Hong elbowed his opponent in the groin. The bodyguard felt the most severe pain that a man could imagine. The boy began to writhe in pain and sob, lying on the asphalt and holding his groin area. The monkey and the fat man couldn't believe that this cop was able to beat up Master Zhao's legendary bodyguard. Yi Hong appreciated the way his opponent fell and realized that he seemed to have gone a little overboard with the damage. Yi Hong asked his colleagues to immediately call an ambulance for the victim. Officer Su was a little confused and did not immediately understand what his partner said to him. Officer Su also pointed his finger behind Yi Hong and said that that guy was not everything. The bodyguard managed to get to his feet and called the policeman shameless, after which he reached into his pocket. The guy took out a small inhaler, from which he began to inhale purple steam. While Yi Hong was trying to figure out the fact that this scumbag had already managed to inhale the drug. After some time, the bodyguard was seized with convulsions and began to move strangely. Cells of the substance filled his blood and the guy began to increase in size. Noticeable purple veins appeared on his body and protruded greatly from his skin. The guy called Yi Hong an idiot, 
his voice changed and he became much bigger after the transformation. The new monster told Yi Hong that right now the policeman would meet his death in this port. Vapors of a strange substance also entered Yi Hong's nose, who began to react strangely to them. The policeman grabbed his head and began to shake, the monster was afraid that he could be like that too, but Yi Hong assured the enemy that he was just joking. A bottle with a strange substance lay broken on the asphalt not far from the scene of the fight. Yi Hong's colleagues watched the guy talking to the strange creature. The police noticed that Yi Hong's opponent looked very scary and huge compared to their colleague. Yi Hong told his opponent that the warm-up was over and now they would start the real fight. The huge guy told the policeman that it was impossible to deceive him or defeat him with his fists. But Yi Hong preferred actions to words and was the first to strike, he made a powerful uppercut to the opponent's chin. The huge guy could not respond with anything yet, but only took all the officer's blows. Next, Yi Hong, without wasting a bit of time, grabbed his opponent by the torso and moved to his back. The policeman began to prepare to throw his opponent into a bend over himself. And Yi Hong did it successfully, he threw his opponent's body over himself and hit his head on the asphalt. The guy received a strong blow and even made huge cracks around himself with his body. The super soldier looked at the sky and did not understand why they could defeat him even with superpowers. Then the bodyguard was flooded with memories from his childhood, once at school he watched hooligans bully a girl. Despite his inability to fight, the guy was very brave and decided to stand up for the schoolgirl. The attention of the hooligans immediately fell on the brave boy who decided to stand up and they beat him. Before leaving, the hooligans praised the guy, saying that even weaklings want to be heroes. The girl he was saving tried to find out if everything was okay with the guy and he answered that yes, although it was clear from his face that he was not feeling very well right now. Ten years later, the now mature boy went into the army and kissed his wife goodbye. They called him right at the service and reported very sad news that concerned his wife. The guy ran through all the corridors of the hospital in search of his beloved. In one of the offices, he found his beloved in an oxygen mask and cried loudly over her, but one of the doctors tried to calm him down. The doctor said that they had an offer for the guy, handing over a business card, if he agreed to cooperate, they could save the girl. After some time, the soldier was in a laboratory where experiments were carried out on animals and people. The same soldier was in the testing capsule, doctors checked his body and health. Everything was normal and the doctor said that they had a special invention that could temporarily improve the soldier's abilities. Mr. Zhao's phone died, which greatly upset the owner, and the man decided to call another subordinate. Words of dissatisfaction could be heard from the car, and another subordinate stood in place next to the passenger door. Xiao called the guy over and he immediately responded to this, the boss told his subordinate that they needed to leave. The guys didn't even think about taking the beaten bodyguard and hastily left the port in a sports car. The bodyguard, meanwhile, returned to his normal and familiar appearance. Yi Hong realized that it would be a difficult investigation for him and he needed to use a lot of force on him, but first still send the boy to the hospital. Officer Yi Hong began to inspect the scene of the fight to find the very bottle that made the guy so bloated. Yi Hong managed to find the rest of the substance and asked the officers to send the defeated guy to the hospital, he and who would bring the rest to the station. The officers looked at their new and ambitious employee, they assured that they would do everything. Rich teenagers felt that they no longer had any protection before the law, which meant they had to leave. Expensive cars quickly left the port, including Yang Zi and his girlfriend. After so much time, battles, wars and humiliations, peace and a calm evening finally reigns in the port without noisy and bullying hooligans. The journey to the station was not the fastest and the police were able to get there at just 9 o'clock and 10 minutes. The officer's hand covered the cell with the suspects, after which the officer set a combination lock. The thugs began to insult Yi Hong and asked to be released immediately. The narrow-eyed bully said that he wanted to see the boss, but Yi Hong explained that the boss was not on duty right now, and if there were any questions, the detainee could ask the policeman. The guy asked the policeman who was on duty, but Yi Hong said that only he could help. This infuriated the guy and he shouted at the top of his lungs that he would kill all the police officers in this station. Yi Hong decided to pacify the guys, showing his strength, the officer was able to bend the bars of the cell with one hand. The teenagers were horrified by the guy's skills and realized that it was better not to anger him again. The officer said he didn't care who the guy was, 
but as long as he was acting against the law, he shouldn't expect any mercy. The guy straightened the cell bars to their original position and ordered the prisoners to shut up and behave. The guy was facing one of the most boring parts of police work, doing paperwork on a computer. Yi Hong began to write a report on the work of the previous night, which took a lot of time. After half an hour of writing reports, Yi Hong yawned, stretched, and left his office. The officer found his partner, who praised the guy and said that he wanted to do this himself, but could not, and Yi Hong explained that it is normal for a person to have fears. Next, Yi Hong decided to ask his partner how long he had been working in the police field. The officer replied that he had been working here for 10 years and had never offended those people, and he also knew that these majors looked down on them. The man also said that over time people become those whom they hated, and in the first time of his service he was a completely different policeman. Yi Hong asked his partner to tell about the event that left the greatest impression on him and the officer began his story. The officer's story begins in the outskirts of the city of Chu Men, there was heavy rain and thunder. One day, a young officer received a call on a rainy evening about a student beating his vice-rector. Students surrounded the entrance to the university and asked among themselves, who called the police? The police said that they had arrived in response to a call and asked the students to disperse and not disturb them. It all seemed fairly normal for the area, with a man lying beaten on the floor and a student waiting for the police. The frightened girl was sitting on the sofa and holding her knees, she was very frightened and did not look very good. The drunken vice-rector harassed the teacher, but her student did not tolerate this and defended the girl. The officer understood that the law was on the side of the vice-rector, although the guy acted as a real man should. Despite the marks from the fight on the teenager himself, it was impossible to prove the vice-rector's guilt. An ambulance arrived at the educational institution to pick up the beaten vice-rector. The teenager also left the school in a car with flashing lights, only this time it was a police car. The cops loaded the teenager into the car, despite being right, the guy did not resist, but began to sob from the understanding that he could be sued. The officer himself could not have expected that at the trial the guy would be accused of assaulting a man. The vice-chancellor was not seriously injured, but he forged the disability certificate and handed it over to the police, Sue could not do anything about it. The innocent student did the right thing, but ended up expelled from school and put behind bars, and he was also an orphan, which made Su feel even worse. Yi Hong reassured his partner and said that it was not his fault, he had only recently joined the police at that time and could not do anything about it. Su did not accept such words, he said that his cowardice was to blame for everything, if he had been a little bolder, the matter would have ended differently, so there is no forgiveness for him, especially since that vice-rector became a prominent figure in the city. Su could not forgive himself for his cowardice, and Yi Hong asked him not to blame himself, because one day karma would overtake that vice-rector. The conversation between the partners was interrupted by Yi Hong's phone, which was called by an unknown number. It was Lolo who shouted that Tang Shu was sick, the girl had a fever and a strong desire to drink, her condition was getting worse every minute. Yi Hong said that he was going to the girls right now to help, the guy understood that this was connected with his plant. Yi Hong told his partner that he had to leave immediately and asked Su to sort out all the other documents and papers. Su did not resist, realizing that his friend was now in serious trouble and agreed to this. Yi Hong quickly got into the company car and headed to his home to pick up the girls. The guy turned on the flashing lights and flew to his home at high speed. A couple of minutes and his car was already in the parking lot of the Jianyao residence. The guy quickly ran into the living room and tried to find the girls in order to quickly take Tang Shu to the hospital. Tang Shu was lying on the bed, and her friend said that the girl had lost consciousness and had not yet returned to it. Yi Hong took Tang Shu in his arms and asked Lulu to urgently take his jacket and grab a flower from his room. Lualu found it strange that the guy needed a flower at the moment when her friend was dying. The guys were already driving along the road. A heavy rain began and the visibility of the road left much to be desired. Lolo was worried about the rain and the guy's driving style, so she asked him to drive slowly and carefully. The guy told the girl to relax, and Tang Shu began to show signs of life. Yi Hong asked Tang Shu to hold on and said that they had almost arrived at their destination. Yi Hong had already arrived at the hospital building and parked his official car in front of the entrance. Luo Luo said that Yi Hong's uniform may raise some questions, so the girl asks him to change his clothes. 
The guy agreed with this and took the clothes from Lolo's hands and the guys went to the hospital. Yi Hong held Tang Shu in his arms and asked the girl to take a ticket to stand in line. The friends entered the room and the doctor asked the guy to put the patient on her back on the bed. Yi Hong put his girlfriend on the bed and covered her with a curtain, at the doctor's request. The doctor asked the guy to wait while they examined Tang Shu. The doctor said that the patient had a temperature of 39 and 8, he added that she would bring a prescription with medications. The guy pointed to the shelf with medicines to the doctor and said that this was everything she asked for. The doctor said that she would give the girl an injection to lower the temperature and put on an 4, and then they could only monitor her health. Yi Hong asked Lolo to stay with Tang Shu, but he needs to call someone now and he will come back. The guy went out into the corridor and dialed Old Fox on his phone to find out more about the plant. The call went through the satellite and a notification about Yi Hong's call appeared on Old Fox's phone. The professor quickly picked up the phone when he saw that his subordinate Yi Hong was calling him. The old fox told the guy that apparently he really misses him if he calls so often. Yi Hong decided to get down to business quickly and asked to tell him more about the plant planted in the pot that the fox left behind. The old fox called it a simple bonsai, but the guy replied that if there was another such joke, he would throw away this flower. The old fox told Yi Hong that he did not understand the value of the flower and asked why he was so worried. Yi Hong said that he didn't have time for long conversations, his friend injected herself with a leaf of this flower and now she has a fever, the guy asked how to make an antidote. The fox replied that everything should be like in martial arts novels, that is, Yi Hong should have intimacy with the girl and then she will be cured. Frightened, Yi Hong asked again, what should he do to cure the girl? The old fox laughed loudly and said that once again he was just joking. Yi Hong again threatened to throw this plant into the trash can and the fox advised crushing one leaf of this flower and mixing it with alcohol, then rubbing the girl's legs and arms. Yi Hong said that he understood everything and hurriedly hung up, leaving the professor alone on the line. Old fox was a little unhappy that his student just hung up the phone without even saying goodbye. But the professor's sadness was not destined to last long, because a beauty was also lying in his bed. Yi Hong entered the ward again and saw Luo Luo fall asleep over the cot where Tang Shu was lying. The girl heard Yi Hong enter the room and woke up from his steps, after which she began to look in his direction. The guy invited the girl to go to the car and rest there while he looked after Tang Shu. The girl said that she would go and wait in the car, and she also indicated that the guy's flower was on the table, if anything. Yi Hong stood over Tang Shu, who was sleeping under an four, and was waiting for the doctor. The doctor returned and asked the guy why the girl had not woken up yet, since more than an hour had passed. Yi Hong replied that there should be no problem with this and asked if he could use rubbing alcohol and cotton wool to lower the temperature. The doctor allowed me to use alcohol and said that if the guy needed help, he could call it at any time using a button. The door slammed and Yi Hong was left alone with the sick Tang Shu, who had not yet recovered. The guy plucked one leaf from a small bore and began to squeeze it in his hand. He tried to squeeze a couple of drops of juice out of it and pour it into a jar with cotton wool and alcohol, he hoped for this method. Tang Shu lay unconscious under a drip, and the solution that the old fox spoke about was already ready. Yi Hong began to mix the alcohol with the drops from the leaf and exposed a small part of Tang Shu's leg. The guy pulled the blanket off the girl and looked for a suitable place to rub Tang Shu with alcohol. The guy began to rub the solution first over Tang Shu's hands, he tried to do everything carefully so as not to wake the girl. Next, the guy's hands began to touch the girl's legs and he began to rub them. Yi Hong's heart was beating with terrible force, and Tang Shu began to show signs of life. But then the door to the room opened and Captain Zhou was there, dressed in civilian clothes. The girl looked for the doctor, but instead saw Yi Hong over the body of a young patient. Zhou started screaming and complaining that the guy was trying to rape the patient. The girl also remembered all her old grievances and tried to kick Yi Hong, but she didn't succeed. Yi Hong raised his hand and shut the noisy hysterical woman's mouth so that she would not wake up Tang Shu. The guy carried the girl into the corridor and pressed her back against the wall so that she would not resist. Yi Hong asked the girl not to scream so as not to disturb the other patients. The guy thought that the girl had already calmed down and slowly removed his hand from her mouth. But Zhou just got up to speed and called the guy a pervert and said that he wouldn't be able to escape this time. 
The doctor returned to the girl's screams and expressed outrage about this noise to the entire hospital. Yi Hong explained to the doctor that this girl suddenly burst into the room and he was afraid that her screams would wake up the patient, so he pulled her out. Zhou tried to justify herself, but the doctor did not want to listen to anything, she advised the girl to leave immediately before the security arrived. The girl was outraged by this treatment and was already preparing to tell the doctor who she really was. But she was interrupted by an old man who asked the girl to remain silent. Everyone immediately turned to look at the man, and Zhou recognized him as her grandfather. The man was not walking alone, but surrounded by two guards, he was heading straight to his granddaughter. Zhou pointed her finger at Yi Hong and said that she saw him trying to rape the patient. The doctor was outraged by the accusations against the guy, she explained that the patient was his family, and she herself was busy, so she asked him to look after the girl. Zhou said that she didn't know and her grandfather ordered his guards to take her away from here. The guard approached the fighting girl at the request of the elderly man. The guard asked Zhou to follow him, the girl was unhappy with this, but could not resist. Yi Hong thought that this girl definitely had an interesting family background. The guard led Zhou away and tried to calm him down, but the girl did not stop complaining about Yi Hong. The grandfather stood in front of the guy and apologized for the behavior of his granddaughter. But he was interrupted by a strong cough and weakness throughout his body. It happened too abruptly. The second guard became worried about Mr. Zhou's health and began actively calling for a doctor. Doctors immediately took charge of the old man, carried him to the bed and began conducting heart examinations. The doctors began to wonder what could have happened to the man, the chest surgeon was in another operating room, but they simply needed him right now. Yi Hong told the doctor that they couldn't wait any longer, the old man's lack of oxygen could cause serious brain damage. Yi Hong looked at the toolbox and was already thinking through a plan to help the old man. The guy said that there is one way to restore a man's breathing and save him. The guy's hand grabbed a sharpened medical instrument that resembled a pencil. Yi Hong stood over the man's body and said that all he had to do was aim at the right place. Mr. Zhou's bodyguard was alarmed by the guy's actions and immediately drew attention to the dangerous object. The guard tried to grab Yi Hong, but the guy managed to dodge his hand in time. While Yi Hong was parrying the bodyguard's blow, he also managed to touch his rib with his hand. The guard grabbed his chest and fell to his knees in front of Yi Hong, who wanted to continue the operation. The guy pointed out to the aggressive guard that he was actually saving the old man and trying to help him. The guard did not believe the guy and asked him to prove that he was really saving Mr. Zhou. Yi Hong said that he had no time for idle talk with the guard and waved his hand over the old man's body. The doctors also tried to stop Yi Hong, but it was too late, he stuck a syringe into the old man's side. He gave an injection and the spring jumped out of the syringe body, and the old man was finally able to breathe. Yi Hong said that the doctors should not have many problems with Mr. Zhou now, but instead of words of gratitude, Yi Hong received a gun, which was pointed directly at his temple. The guard threatened to kill Yi Hong right now for trying to kill Mr. Zhou. Yi Hong was not afraid of the pistols, and he grabbed the barrel body with his hand and broke it. Parts of the pistol scattered, the magazine, cartridges, spring and bolt simply scattered from the body. Yi Hong, in order to completely neutralize the guard and protect himself, hit him in the chest. The guard flew into the wall from the blow and hit his back hard, and Yi Hong began to examine his hands and tried to understand where he got so much strength from. One girl on the team told Dr. Li that the patient had begun to breathe and his heartbeat had returned to normal. Dr. Li looked more at Yi Hong than at the patient, and the joyful guard couldn't believe that his boss was okay. Yi Hong stood and listened as Dr. Li praised him and asked him where he learned so much. The doctor said that only a breast surgeon could know about this, she asked if Yi Hong was the doctor in the hour. Yi Hong replied that he was not a doctor, he just knew a couple of methods, he also said that he could now leave the doctors and go to the ward. Dr. Li thanked Yi Hong again for his assistance in the operation and wished him good luck. But Mr. Zhou's bodyguard didn't want to let the guy go so easily, he asked him to wait. Yi Hong looked at the man's disassembled gun and asked what he wanted from him. First, the bodyguard apologized for being rude to the guy and trying to kill him, and he also thanked him for saving the boss. But he was also interested in how Yi Hong managed to do what happened with his gun. It was still deep night on the street and the actions from the hospital did not transfer anywhere. Yi Hong explained to the bodyguard that when he was abroad, 
He was very fond of weapons and could disassemble a couple of such pistols in a day. The guard thought about these words and thanked Yi Hong again for his help. Yi Hong said that there was nothing special about it, he also pointed out that they should help each other. When the guy left the ward, he met the gaze of Zhou Yu, who was worried about her grandfather. Now Yi Hong entered the room to Tang Shu, who greeted him and looked much better. Tang Shu confirmed the guy's guesses, the girl said that she felt fine and asked about the noise that she heard. Yi Hong replied that there was nothing wrong, they just brought in a seriously ill patient. Yi Hong said that they did not have much time and suggested that his friend go home as quickly as possible. The couple was distracted by a knock on the door, it was Zhou, who thanked Yi Hong for saving her grandfather's life. The girl recalled that that time she stole the guy's car and his driver's license, she said that she would return them tomorrow. Yi Hong asked not to do everything through connections and to resolve all problems in accordance with the law. The guy also said that he urgently needed to leave and suggested that we discuss everything next time. Zhou was dissatisfied with the answer because she was thinking about words of gratitude, and Yi Hong answered too impudently. The girl quickly left the room and slammed the door behind her, not wanting to talk to Yi Hong anymore. Tang Shu asked Yi Hong who this girl was and how did they know each other. The guy replied that this was a strange person and asked Tang Shu not to pay attention to her, especially since Lu Luo was waiting for them in the car. Tang Shu did not immediately rise to her feet, she again called Yi Hong closer to her. Yi Hong turned around and responded to the request of the girl who was still sitting on the bed. Tang Shu pointed to her feet and said that her shoes were missing, so she wouldn't be able to walk. Yi Hong asked the girl to say directly if she wanted him to carry her in his arms. Tang Shu laughed and said that if she walked barefoot, her temperature would rise again. The guy told the girl to put on her coat and agreed to carry her home on himself, so Yi Hong was already pulling the girl on himself. Coming out of the room, Yi Hong immediately looked around and saw someone else. It was Mr. Zhou with his granddaughter and guards, the old man in the stroller was asking if Yi Hong was leaving. Mr. Zhou explained that he was going to thank the guy for saving his life. Yi Hong insisted that it was not difficult for him and that it was better for the old man to rest now, but the grandfather was not going to just let the guy go. Outraged, Zhou Yu told the guy that her grandfather personally thanked the guy, but he couldn't remove his impudent gaze. Mr. Zhou was unhappy with his granddaughter's indignation and ordered her to shut up immediately. After these words, the old man began to cough loudly and painfully again. One of the bodyguards said that it was better for the old man to rest more now and not strain himself. Mr. Zhou waved his hand and said that he could bear some inconvenience. The old man said that he served in the army all his life, which means he doesn't have much money. He handed over his bank card and said that this was a sign of gratitude for the savior. Yi Hong refused to accept the gift and said that he was saving the old man not because of his status or money, but because he needed help, and he also added that it was time for him to go. The old man said that in any case, if the boy needed any help, he could always contact Zhou Beichuan. Yi Hong and her neighbors had already arrived at the residence and were going up to the seventh floor to their apartment. The guys turned on the light in the living room and were about to go to their rooms. Tang Shu said that the guy needed to regain his strength and everyone wished each other good night. In the morning at the station, the warden scolded officer Su Yang, trying to find out what this all meant. The warden said his phone didn't stop ringing all night, he wanted to know what his employees had done. Su Yang explained that these teenagers deliberately caused trouble and insulted the officers, and then handed over the work report. The surprised officer came to life with some reaction from the department supervisor, who looked annoyed. The man, having examined the report, said that these guys were really crossing the line, but they had already been detained, the teenagers had learned their lesson and should be released, the warden added. Su Yang said that he would be glad to release the majors, but Yi Hong now has the keys to the cell. Then the supervisor asked to urgently call employee Yi Hong directly here. One of the detainees shouted the guard's name to attract attention. The guy told Zhang Yuan Gang that he wanted to see his lawyer here. The warden said that of course Zhang Biao could see his lawyer and he would be summoned now. The warden asked Su Yang to call Yi Hong to the station and also call Zhang Biao's lawyer. After some time, an official car arrived at the entrance to the station with Yi Hong inside, and Yang Zi was waiting for him outside the wall. Yi Hong asked the guy not to hide, because he sees his shadow and Yang Zi came out to him, the policeman asked why he was behaving so strangely.
Yang Zi wanted to convey some information to Yi Hong and handed him the phone, he called it a gift. Yang Zi said that he managed to film everything that happened in the port on his phone, especially the group of Bu Yun and Zhang Biao. Yi Hong watched the video and Yang Zi asked if there was enough evidence for the police. Yang Zi refused to thank the policeman and said that next time he could just treat him to food, and then left. A huge group of people, the warden, Su Yen and the lawyer were waiting for Yi Hong at the station. Zhang Biao called the officer a bastard, referring to what happened last night. Yi Hong himself was not in such a bad mood and he kindly asked the teenager about his vacation last night. An angry Zhang Biao wanted to kill the cop and told the lawyer that it was this officer who beat them up without reason at night. The lawyer asked the officer to explain how the prisoners were injured and since when did the police have the right to hurt people, the lawyer asked for a reasonable explanation for all this. Yi Hong pushed the lawyer away and asked him not to obstruct justice. Yi Hong used his card to open the cell with the juvenile thugs. The officer said that the door is now open and the teenagers can leave here. Zhang Biao began to protest, saying that the officer had actually beaten them last night, and now he was asking them to just leave. Yi Hong explained that street racing was a violation of public order, also an insult to the officers, and the police were extremely polite to them. The lawyer reminded the officer that he could not make such statements and administer justice without evidence, but Yi Hong had an answer to that too. The situation at the police station remained tense between the lawyer and the officers. Yi Hong held the phone given to Yang Zi in his hands and said that if the lawyer needed evidence, he would get it. The policeman turned on the projector on the phone and found video from the port in the files. In the video, you could clearly see and hear how the teenagers were spitting, insulting the officers, threatening them and not reacting in any way to the comments. Everyone at the police station froze, Su Yang realized that they had a real bully in their department who would seek the truth. Yi Hong turned off the video and asked the lawyer if he wanted to add anything else to protect the teenagers. The lawyer realized that now the issue must be resolved in other ways and offered to resolve this conflict confidentially. The man offered to tell Yi Hong the amount for which he could sell this phone right now and settle everything. Yi Hong said that he was not interested in money, and the lawyer advised him not to tempt fate. Yi Hong thought about the lawyer's words and walked towards the cell with the detained teenagers. The officer slammed the doors again with all his might and left the rich kids behind bars. Zhang Biao asked his lawyer what was going on and why were they not free yet. The man replied that the police managed to record everything and now they are all in serious trouble. The guy didn't understand how there could be any problems with his money and asked the cop what he wanted from it. Yi Hong said that he didn't need anything, he also recalled that he gave the guys a chance to get out, but now they can only enjoy life behind bars. Zhang Biao tried to stop the principled officer, but Yi Hong simply ignored him. The lawyer realized that in this case it was necessary to negotiate immediately with the supervisor of the police station. But the warden was also fed up with such children, so he denied it as best he could and told the lawyer to contact the officer who is related to the case. Su Yang reminded the lawyer that his time to talk was up and asked him to leave the premises. The door with the lawyer and the warden slammed shut and only the cell with the locked teenagers remained in the room. The teenagers began to protest that they were not allowed out, each of the hooligans regretted that they had not gone out through the open door. The leader of the entire gang ordered the others to shut up and stop whining, because it was already late. The guy said that this is not a global problem and they will not die from this, especially since he has already encountered something similar. The bully called Yi Hong a simple policeman who can throw a few punches, but he won't be able to maintain his expression for long. Yi Hong was already in the locker room and looking at the time, he remembered that the next shift was not his, which means it was better to go home and get some rest. The officer took off his uniform and hung up his badge, then went to get his things. Yi Hong carefully put all his things in the locker and was in no hurry. After changing clothes, the guy headed towards the exit to finally leave the site. Going outside, Yi Hong remembered that his driver's license was no longer there, which meant he would have to call a taxi home. After a hard night, the guy took a taxi to his home to get at least a little rest. The taxi arrived at its destination and Yi Hong got out of the car in front of the residence. Yi Hong saw an expensive car that was parked near his building. The guy examined the body of his house and tried to figure out who could come to them in such a car. The guy took the elevator to his floor and walked along the corridor to his door. Entering the apartment, he found a man in a suit, 
who greatly surprised him with his presence. Tang Shu asked Yi Hong why he returned so early and introduced the man, this is Uncle Xiong and he came to help the girl with her luggage. The man extended his hand to the guy and said his name, thanking him for saving Tang Shu. Yi Hong also extended his hand and introduced himself after shaking hands with Uncle Xiong. Yi Hong immediately began to examine and evaluate the guest, the guy concluded that this man was unusual and had been on the battlefield. Tang Shu told her uncle that she had already packed everything and asked him to wait for him downstairs. The uncle said that he would see the girl downstairs in 10 minutes, but in the meantime he would take her luggage to the car. Surprised, Yi Hong asked where Tang Shu was moving to and why. The girl replied that her classes would begin tomorrow, and she herself had a lot of things to do, she would return when her sister arrived from abroad. This alerted Yi Hong and he told Tang Shu that she was hiding something from the guy or trying to hide something. The guy moved even closer to the girl's face, which made her worry and even scared her a little. But it was a simple joke, Yi Hong assured the girl that she would always be welcome here. Tang Shu didn't appreciate the joke, but called the guy cute, then hugged him and said that she would miss the guy. Yi Hong realized that now he was alone in his apartment again, which meant he needed to practice. The guy went downstairs and started doing push-ups, this was not his first attempt. Next, he began to pump up the press, which was enough for 500 repetitions. Yi Hong called it a simple warm-up before running, these exercises did not tire him at all. Yi Hong was running through the park in his neighborhood and suddenly stopped when he noticed a large house. His attention was drawn to the huge villa, which was the only one in the area. Yi Hong was surprised, because he did not expect to find a villa in his district, especially such a large one. The athlete noticed a suspicious guy sneaking towards the villa and looking around. Yi Hong stood behind a tree and decided to follow the suspicious citizen. The guy took out a can of spray paint and looked with interest at the wall of the villa. The bully painted his special sign on the villa and began to take pride in his work. He was distracted from his joy at damaging someone else's property by a small detail that embarrassed him. It was a little girl with a ball who was looking at the bully through the fence. The bully did not want anyone to see him and took out a folding knife from his pocket. The guy climbed over the fence and told the girl that since she had already seen him, she should blame her bad luck. Yi Hong saw everything clearly and understood that measures needed to be taken, because something terrible could happen. The vandal with a knife in his hands climbed out onto the fence and looked at the frightened girl with the ball. Yi Hong couldn't just watch this and decided to intervene, the guy began to look for a larger stone. Yi Hong threw a small stone directly towards the bully to knock him down. The stone flew with a loud whistle and was able to tear the vandal's trousers and leave a scar on his leg. As expected from such force, the bully could not stand on his feet and fell off the fence. The bully looked at his wound with horror and realized that someone was apparently watching him. Yi Hong appeared behind him, who had not yet said anything, but simply watched the guy. The guy asked Yi Hong what he was looking at and said that he belonged to the gang of flying eagles. But the athlete didn't care what gang the guy was from, he asked him to get out of here and preferably quickly. The culprit thought that if not for his injury, he would have crushed Yi Hong's skull right now. But he just said that he didn't want to bother with anyone today and walked away from here with a limping gait. Yi Hong thought about the Flying Eagle Gang, he wanted to know more information about them. But Yi Hong's thoughts about the criminals were distracted by a little girl who was looking at him. The guy thought that she wouldn't take him for a bad guy, which meant he needed to leave quickly. The guy started to leave the station, and the girl ran after him and called him daddy. Yi Hong was shocked by this word, it was too much for him to hear such a thing from a little girl. At first he thought that it was not for him and asked again if the girl really called him that. The baby answered in the affirmative, and the guy remembered that he had never had sexual experience before, so the girl could not be his daughter, he explained to her that she was mistaken. The baby said that daddy had never seen her, but he saw him and was sure of it. Yi Hong asked the child where she had seen him before and the little girl replied that in her dreams. The girl turned around, they started calling her by the name Yu Hao, it was her mother who was looking for the child. The girl stood in a dressing gown and asked the little girl why she ran here alone. Seeing a guy nearby, she took the baby in her arms and warned that the guys from the Eagle Gang had stopped chasing her, otherwise she would call the police. A ball fell under Yi Hong's feet from the hands of a little girl who was trying to explain something to the girl. The girl said that daddy had just driven away the bullies and the mother was surprised that the little girl called the guy daddy. 
the little girl said that she saw him in her dreams and he helped drive away the bad guys. Yi Hong asked mommy not to worry and said that he was just passing by and chased away the bully, and if she needed help, she could go to the police. The girl thanked the stranger and said that at first she had misunderstood everything, and that she would settle everything properly with the hooligans. The little girl did not want to part with Yi Hong, whom she considered her father, and the guy simply waved his hand at her and went on about his business. The door to the family's house slammed shut, and Yi Hong continued his run through the park. After a little training, Yi Hong returned home and the first thing he did was take a shower. Yi Hong looked at his uniform, which he had brought for washing, and began to inspect his pockets. He tried for a long time to find the substance that Mr. Zhao's bodyguard used. The guy said it was time for the clinic team to have some fun and flex their brains. Yi Hong took out his phone and began analyzing the unidentified substance. His phone was able to read all the necessary data from the broken device. The guy's phone visualized all the necessary data and sent it to the clinic department. Yi Hong remembered that he still had a wounded bodyguard who needed to be visited. Yi Hong headed to Chu Men City Hospital in search of a bodyguard. There was also a girl in the hospital whom Yi Hong saved in Egypt, she was working on the computer. The girl also studied the bodyguard's tests, she was interested in him. The scientist did not expect that other organizations had already advanced their research to such a stage. The girl began transferring data and conducted an experiment with the serum on a rat. The transfer of all data was completed and she, grabbing the flash drive, headed towards the exit. The girl opened the door and walked along the hospital corridor in an attempt to escape quickly. Yi Hong was already in the same hospital, who had just arrived and entered the building. The guy was waiting for the elevator, in which was the same girl with a flash drive. The elevator quickly descended to the first floor and did not keep Yi Hong waiting for him for long. Yi Hong almost collided with the guy who had the box in his hands, but managed to remove the case in time. The guy entered the elevator and chose the desired seventh floor, but his gaze could not get away from the crowd. Yi Hong recognized someone in the crowd of people, he simply couldn't look away from there. He looked at the beauty and realized that this was exactly the girl from Egypt whom the militants were trying to kidnap. But, unfortunately, the elevator door closed for the guy and he lost sight of the girl. Yi Hong thought that this looked interesting, apparently fate was bringing them together again. The elevator started moving and began to rise higher and higher, Yi Hong couldn't wait to meet the bodyguard. Meanwhile, something interesting was also happening in the women's restroom. The red-haired girl was changing into a nurse's uniform. The girl received a message on her phone telling her to get rid of the experiment and not leave any traces behind her. Yi Hong walked up to the reception desk and greeted the nurses. Yi Hong asked the girls, in which direction is ward number 703? The girls pointed out that this was the third room along the corridor, to the left of the guy. Yi Hong walked down the corridor in search of a suitable room and finally found it. At the entrance, he saw a photo of the duty nurse Chu Lima and remembered her just in case, after which he went inside. The bodyguard lay on his bed and did not move at all. The guy recognized Yi Hong and said that he remembered him, and the policeman wished him health. Yi Hong sat next to the bed and asked the victim if he could fulfill his promise. The boy's conversation was interrupted by a nurse who said that it was time for Mr. Poos injections. The girl from the women's restroom came inside the room and asked the patient how he was feeling. Mr. Poo looked at the girl and said that this was not his nurse. The girl lied that Chu Lima needed to leave and now she is kindly replacing her. Yi Hong also suspected something was wrong, because he clearly remembered the nurse's appearance and felt there was something wrong here. The girl approached the lying guy and took all her tools in her hands. She began to treat and degrease the patient's skin with cotton wool and alcohol. Yi Hong told the nurse that they were young and preferred intravenous injections to avoid any hassle. The fake nurse laughed and said that it was just more convenient for her. But Yi Hong didn't believe the girl and grabbed her hand, where there was a syringe, so that he wouldn't have time to do anything to the bodyguard. The sister began to protest, and Yi Hong said that he just wanted to ask a few questions. The guy explained to the girl that she did not understand even such basic medical knowledge and this was strange. The guy said that intravenous means that you have to look for a vein and ask the girl who sent her here to kill? The mercenary snatched the syringe from the guy's hands, which greatly surprised him. She managed to injure the guy's fingers, from which blood fell in drops onto the floor of the room. The girl said that since she was exposed, she would have to kill both of them. 
The frightened bodyguard asked if the girl had been sent by the organization to kill him. Yi Hong said that if this is true, then there really is no compassion in his organization.